are now listening to Human Beings. Three, two, one. Wait, what episode number? I don't know. Oh. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> We're live. live. All right. Oh, shit. All right. On episode uh, 22. <laughs> I think 22. I don't know. All right. To be honest. It's been too long, obviously. Yes. yes and we welcome sure. Gonzo in the house. In the building. Gonzo. And EJ Nieves. We Ooh. outside. Local we inside. Artiste. And then, unfortunately, Chris couldn't make it, but this cologne that we have, <laughs> uh, he, he was able to make it to this episode today. Yeah. I got lipo. Hell yeah. How did, how did it feel, bro? Yeah, how bro. How was the surgery? Uh, the surgery went good. Um, <laughs> wow, he's really going <laughs> no, with no, it. No, no, no. Um, I feel amazing, though. To be yeah. honest, I feel like a completely different new man. Honestly, you, you look like the other Chris threw you up, bro. Like, <laughs> like you... Majin Boo. Yes, so exactly. Majin Boo. Now it's I'm like point. adult Boo. What's the poundage, bro? <laughs> like 60, 65? 65. Huh? Wow, I heard you last night say 65. at the party 65 pounds. Yeah, wow. that's like almost 70, a pound a day in 70 I days. Know. And I've been kind of stagnant from there, kind of like staying like slowly going down and up, but yeah. It's uh, you're looking good, bro. Yeah, man, Thank you look you, good. You're looking good, Thank look healthy. You. Yeah, it's ready about to, to turn into a whole new show. We got that black couch right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to step off of it. Man. So, how do you feel about anal? <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. Uh, well, shit. you're not gonna get paid for this one, <laughs> but this is actually going to be a first of many in the new barbershop. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the owners right here, Ooh, Philby sir. Fades, Gonzo. Brad. Yeah. What's that? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the what's what? So first of all, what's the name of the barbershop? Elevate Barbering, baby. We're here. That's Elevate, Elevate. Barbering. Yep. And you can see, I don't know if they got it in the camera, but that's our logo. That e- EJ actually did this mural for those of you who don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So it's have this beautiful. Huge, sick mural behind us. That Thank he put, you. He put at least a week of work into. Yeah. yeah. Well, hold on. Since we're here, though, like, can you share why Elevate Barbering? Yeah. Like, why yeah, the yeah. word? You want to take it? Oh, no, you can take it because yeah. you kind of, no. <laughs> Phil, if Philby came up with the name, okay. I just approved. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let him take it from Executive here. producer. Like, is this yeah. okay? Can I do this, Dad? <laughs> yeah. No, um, for me, Elevate is uh, just not, is more than just barbering, right? Mm-hmm. But obviously, we're barbers first, yes. it, at least for the shop, for sure. Um, so it's about elevating the barbering game in general, yeah. elevating our own barbering skills, elevating the look of our clients when they come in here. We're trying to elevate everything. And then also just the vibe of the atmosphere um, when you come in and we're trying to chill, have a good talk. You know, the conversations we all like to have, yeah. like the one that like what we're here for today, mm-hmm. it's always about elevating ourselves and elevating the trajectory of our futures, our families, our lives, everything. So it's like an all encompassing yeah. um, aspect. And it just sounds cool, right? Elevate. So I had to pick something also that would be like, oh, if you're talking about that barbershop, it's like a one word thing. Like, oh, where are you going? I'll elevate. You yeah. know what I mean? That you don't have to like say a long thing for. Yep. And I didn't want barbershop in the name because I didn't want it to be limited to just a barbershop. Like, gotcha. I wanted to be able to expand it beyond that. So barbering seemed like the best option. It's yeah. a brand. Yeah, it's a brand. exactly. Rather than a name. You Which know. is funny because two companies, two of the contractors we already had come in to do work, on their invoice it says Elevate Barbershop. Yeah. And I want to call them. People like, are going to fuck it up. No, no, no. I need you to it's send barber. me back that invoice and do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Put some respect on my name. Yeah. <laughs> Put some respect on my name. Yeah. Plus then when we go on to education because we want to do education next, yeah. it's going to be Elevate Barbering Academy. You know? Come and on, go man. along those lines. Everything we do now obviously is Elevate. And that's all we about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Elevating man. all the time, bro. So that's why. No, it's perfect. perfect. And then name. it went with the space theme. Yeah. Because yes. that's in your physical body. It's the highest that we know of that we can elevate. Like yeah. after the, you can elevate more, but you're going to have to leave your body for that one. I, at least that's <laughs> what I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Astro projection. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, that's a whole ooh, other topic ooh. right there. But uh, even know what that so is. that's why we went with <laughs> See, now we got to like talk about it. it. But uh, that's why we went with the space theme. So that's why when I when we brought you on to do that, which was great timing that you showed up at that uh, that back to school event. Yeah. Um, I showed you the wall and you were like, yeah, let's do it. And my idea was just having yeah. Galaxy. Uh, is like, that is galaxy. that how you had a conversation with him at the back to school? Event? Yeah. Well, yeah. I called him twice and he ignored my call. Never called me back. My bad. You saw my <laughs> notification. <laughs> yeah. saw my, I, I don't answer phones. We know you're in now. Was it was, it was like 300 missed calls and like 160 <laughs> text messages. Yeah. My bad, man. I, no, I get it. I get it because I'm, I'm there all the time. I could, yeah. I could do that for the emails. Like yeah. I, My emails are at 20,000. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the Spam. phone calls and the texts, I can't. I but, okay, it, in defense to myself, a lot of those are from group text messages. <laughs> okay. And yeah, um, if can you guys can tell me how to get out of a group text, I mean. You can mm-hmm. leave it. See, yeah. okay. You see, can we'll, leave it or you can hide the alerts. See, well, we need to talk after the show then. So I, <laughs> but it's, it's funny, I can do all this number. other stuff, but I don't know how to leave a group <laughs> chat. Uh, but, yeah, man. No, can I just share real quick a little bit yeah, about yeah. the mural? And then also about um, the guys, man. So when they, when they talked to me about the mural, one of the biggest things I wanted to just put out there because I, I love to advocate for artists. And a lot of times with artists, man, the, the, the best version of the artist you're going to get is if you let them run with as much of the vision as possible. So these guys, man, like, they really didn't give me any parameters except for the, fact that, and except for the fact that they wanted a space theme. So, like, they were like, yo, space theme, we want purples in it, do it. And that's like that's like a dream come true to an artist, man, to have yeah. this much wall space and let me go crazy. Yeah, cool. would you say that other clients are a little more specific, a lot more specific on their requests and stuff? Yeah, man, because of course, you know, of course, money's money, and you know, a lot of times there's I don't want to I don't want to use the word entitlement, but there's definitely there's a a, a definitive sense of ownership over mm-hmm. vision because I'm like, yeah, I'm about to shell out X amount of money. So I want control of the vision. But mm-hmm. a lot of times, like that client, you know, it depends on what it is. But a lot of times with a creative, like that client creative relationship, only it works to the optimal level mm-hmm. when the client doesn't really give a lot of parameters. But in times past, a lot of clients have given me bullet points and emails like, hey, we're going to need this, 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 and this. Damn. And I, and I'll grit my teeth and I'll do it, you know what I mean? Because there's a couple factors to it, like... Of course, the money's good. Yeah. You know, I'm doing this full time. So I'm still working on my journey as an artist to get to a place where somebody just says, hey, they're calling me. Like, you know, I'm not cold calling people or cold emailing or promoting like crazy. But like I, my prayer, my dream is to get to a place where it's like clients, you know, potential clients will email us and say, hey, this is our budget. What can we do? And you can do yeah. whatever you want. Ooh. That's my dream, you know. I, I was a, gonna say that's also similar to like just running a business in general. Yes, because right. a lot of people try and get to small businesses on their own because they want that creative freedom to do and run the business the way it is. And it's the same with artistry. Yep, doing that because if you're if someone's giving you bullet points of what to draw, it's kind of like, well, the whole reason why I'm in this is so I can creatively create something. Yes, mm-hmm. as opposed to mm-hmm. just you're like almost tracing at that point. Yep. But like then it, what they're what they're what they want. Then it's a double edged sword as an artist because you got to make money. Yeah. Yes, you know what right. I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like everybody sees your artwork and they're like, "That's awesome! I have an idea that I want you to paint for me." Yeah, but it's their idea. Yeah, and you got to cater to that just yeah. to make the make to make the money so that you can be creative. Because it, oh, okay. it's okay. the same thing for haircuts. Like somebody, I was just about to ask. Yeah, because somebody I comes was, in. Yeah, I was gonna say that. And too. then you give your opinion too. Yeah. But like somebody comes in and asks for a haircut, I'm he, I'm here to, to give you the best haircut that you want, the one yeah. that you came in for. You're paying me to get what you want. Yeah. If but if you come in and just say, hey, bro, just do your thing. I just want to look good when I leave. Yeah. That's the equivalent of us giving you a whole wall and saying, do your thing, right? Yeah. Which as a as a barber. Or, or, or an artist in that way, that's my favorite thing. It's like, cool, I get to do whatever I'm feeling right now, yep. and you're going to look fresh when you leave. Yeah. But not everybody, some people have more specific parameters than others. You know what I mean? So, like, Gonzo, would you, how many times, is that a, is that a regular occurrence? Like, people coming in being like, yo, whatever you think, or how does that relationship work? There's some clients that do that, but... I feel like in every haircut that you do, specific to the barber, you're going to put your own flair to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to ask for a mid-fade. Somebody's going to ask for a fade, whatever. You're going to do a fade that you think fits their head shape, fits their body, and fits them the yeah. best. That's why you're an artist. You know better than them, and they're a client. Yeah. They're a consumer. You, you're going to know better. You're the expert. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you tell them that. I know better than you. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> and then they come up, they look at the mirror and they're like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is blowing my mind because this is something that they couldn't even expect. Yeah. This is something that we couldn't even expect. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. that's that's what sets the bar and why you're an artist and why we're artists. We, we do our thing and then you yeah. ask for something and we deliver. Yeah. I have, I'll have Thank to show you guys a picture because I actually just had that happen the other night. 
um, I had a client come in and they were excited. Uh, there, it was two cousins. They were uh, homeboys and cousins. And they came in excited about the new shop. Mm-hmm. And one of them had really long hair, like probably my length or maybe longer. Yeah. And he came in. He was like, yo, I'm cutting it off. Just do whatever you want to do. Did the I picture, show you that? The picture you showed me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Whoa. Uh, oh, that was, that was just you just thought about doing it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I thought he actually wanted that. No, no. He came in. He was like, yo. Do whatever you want. Just cut it off. Are you serious? And I was like, let's go. You showed me that picture yesterday. It's amazing. Thank you. I it's, like, it's that, like, that it was left probably me one speechless. of my best haircuts. One of my best haircuts for sure. Did you post it on socials already? I'm, I was saving it for a good okay. day. Okay. And that was supposed to be yesterday and I forgot. Well, today. Uh, yeah. Yesterday was a grand opening, by the way. Know. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats, so congrats guys. We popped some bottles. We official. Popped some bottles. Popped the champagne. Yeah, it was the perfect champagne It pop. really was. I know. Was it? And yeah. the video that Jessica got? Did you see Jessica's no, video? No, I didn't. I, didn't oh, get, I only got one angle with I'll my, from my sister. Video. Video. We'll have to put it up. Yeah, I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. Oh, see, we're going to get to the point where eventually we have somebody controlling the screen. And we're just yeah. like, look, it's right there. Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, yeah, yeah, Jeremy where Jeremy. you at, bro? While here, wanting to have kids and shit. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. By the way, speaking of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Congratulations yeah. to Gonzo, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. How do you feel? Had a child. How does it feel? Tell hey, us man. a little bit about the that. Sleep is less, you okay. know, more responsibility. Luckily, I have somebody at home taking care of them most of the time, you know, but yeah. the nights are rough. Mm-hmm. And then we just go through the process, you know. First it's, boy. It's crazy. First boy. That's Nico. awesome. Nico Javier, bro. That is a beautiful name. Thank you. Thank you. Name Javier is my brother's name. Yeah. You know, Javier, uh, he, he put my name as his his son's middle name, so I was like, I had to return the favor. <laughs> wow. He's like, yeah. damn it, that's I'm love. Obligated. Nah, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, I got to, that's bro. Love. I got to. That's I got to show my brother love, you know what I'm saying? That's love. And he really appreciates it, too. So. Where did Nico come from? Nico, yeah. Honestly, Nico came from an app. So there's an app that you can get that um, it's kind of <laughs> like Tinder. And it's <laughs> for baby names? For baby names. You, oh, okay. You okay. swipe left or you swipe right. Uh, okay. And then the you hell? and you and your significant other, they they're attached to the page as well. So whatever you guys swipe right on or swipe left on and approve. Oh, that's fine. And you guys have a match. Oh. So we had a few matches, you know, and then we, we went from there. We wanted we wanted a short name because I don't like I don't like the long ass names. Then yeah. we got a then we got to go get with a nickname. Nick, cool. Nico is perfect, you know? Yeah. And then we could go for with some nicknames. We got already Neeks, you know? We yeah, got Nico, yeah, you yeah, know? Nico. It's, it's perfect. Coco. Coco, you know? Who knows? Coco. I like Neeks. Neeks. Neek Neek Mill. Neek Mill. What up, Neek Mill? I'm yeah, going to start name. coming off with a million nicknames now. Nicknames. Nick- what? Nicknames. Nicknames. Nico names. <laughs> no, Nico I, names. You're making me want to have another baby just to use the app. I know. Yeah. That no, I'm time. like, I want a baby I'm gonna now. I want to use that. <laughs> I'm going to change my name. I know about it. Like, <laughs> we, like, we can like pretend to adopt a kid, oh. and then you and me do the app thing together. <laughs> and then we swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the name would be if Phil B and EJ had it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fire. That'd be we fire. might have to try that. Wait, who's, actually, who's last name? Oh, Ooh, we'd have to talk about. Paper, it. He's obviously the woman. So rock paper scissors. Phil B, yeah, Phil B got the long hair. I got the hair. I'll take it. Yeah. At least it's the hair. And you're rocking pink, so we're <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> so let me ask you guys, uh, how about the, uh, do you feel like you guys, uh, this transition of opening a barbershop, do you feel like it was like kind of a stressful thing or a struggle or good question. Any, any type That's of good. obstacle I want to hear that, you feel of... like, that you feel like That's good. was like, damn, this is a little overwhelming uh-huh. or anything like that, especially you having a kid. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Of... Yeah. The timing for me was, was a lot and I was expecting it to, to be a lot. So yeah. Obviously, everybody else is stressing around me. I'm just trying to be mm-hmm. as calm and collective as possible. Like, yo, we got this. Mm-hmm. You know, this is going to happen regardless. We, we have to do this. That's the way and, to do and, it. and whatever comes in our way, we, we deal with it in that time, and then we move on and we mm-hmm. move forward. We can't just stop it because something came in our way. Mm-hmm. Then nothing is going to get done. You know what I'm saying? So I think it, it was stressful, mm-hmm. but it's, I, I believed in the vision, and we got it done. Scale of 1 to 10, how stressful? Yeah. Oh, um, a good Seven to eight. Yeah. Ooh, I, it, it, that's it, up there. But not. I feel but you. I, I, feel I mean, but, but even I don't still. stress like that, though. Like, Wait, it's not outwardly stressed. Exactly. Like, yeah. like, we never. I never felt like he was stressed. I yeah. don't know if you felt like I was. I was stressed over one thing, and that was the power. That yeah, was okay. the only thing that like got me to like a frustrated point. But what about but even building. working with contractors? Yeah, man. yo, hell yeah, that's like, that's annoying too. But that, you kind of expect it. Though. You yeah. you got to deal with people that run their business kind of shitty sometimes, yeah. you know. And yeah. then you you just deal with that, and it depends on their price. It depends on 
how they operate business, and we we know how people are that, sometimes. And yeah. it's, it's that crazy. that even goes aligned with like what we were talking about earlier with the creativity part. When you hire someone, yeah. those are the type of people you don't want to give creativity to. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. Those type of contractors like, nah. because no, they need, need specific done. directions, yep. or they're just gonna half ass it. Right. And from what I've noticed, and just my experience, and also in the experience here recording the documentary, which is gonna be the Elevate Barbering documentary. That's yeah. gonna be fire. That's Whoa. gonna be coming out, yep. but. Just that alone is like, what's up with all these small businesses and the way they run their business? Yeah. Like, I would I would say the I biggest don't... problem is their communication. Yeah, their or communication, lack the, or yeah. lack of communication that they have within each other, and everybody yeah. doesn't have the same level of knowledge. Exactly. And everybody's giving you one piece of uh, like thing that you need at one time, and yeah. it's like, no, tell me, tell me what I need to know at one time, yeah. and then everybody tell me that too. Yeah. Everybody's kinda, gotta yeah. be consistent. I, for me, it, it, this is an interesting conversation that I've. It's one of those, like, you always want to have it, like, you've wanted to have it, but you never know even how to introduce this conversation. <laughs> but for me, when I think about, like, a lot of small businesses, and I, it's going to sound mad disrespectful, but it's like, it's almost like HOAs in, in residential areas, you know, like, Which residential areas yeah. that don't and have we'll HOAs, <laughs> and a lot of people hate HOAs, I right, do. but... When you see neighborhoods that don't have HOAs, everybody's doing whatever they want. They got trash in their front yard. They haven't yeah. cut their grass in three months. They yep. got all you know broken down vehicles in the front. You know, it's just it's wild. It's like a wild wild west. Yeah. And there are times that I feel like with small businesses, especially like there there definitely should be because I still consider my. I mean, I'm not I'm not big box yet. You know, what I'm saying I want to be with my galleries and with my art and all that kind of stuff, but. With small business, I think a lot of times there needs to be some kind of like, almost like a, like let us teach you, let us let us help you for the first couple of years. Because what do they say? Like the first five years of every business, you go negative profits. You, you either gonna make it, you're gonna make it or break it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So in the first five years, I feel like there definitely should be some kind of, you know, monitoring system, HOA, if you will, that helps people make sure that they're doing the best that they can. Mm -hmm. Structure. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the term HOA, but yes. Yeah, no, and I wouldn't use the word HOA either, but, but that's a, the closest thing that I could think yeah, of yeah. because, I mean, when you look at it, you know, on like paper, a, guide, a yeah. guiding system, a guiding yeah. system yeah. Yeah. I just look at residential areas and I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, you could tell sometimes when yeah. there's not one, even yeah. though I don't like them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. you don't like them either? I, HOAs? I hate HOAs. Oh, yeah. No, I don't like HOAs because, yeah. of course, you got to pay. But, but you understand the, but the concept. But the yeah, concept and the, it it's, keeps but everything for me, nice and I think organized. One of, the, one of the worst parts for the HOA thing is the type of people that are attracted to HOA community. I feel you. Then that creates like a negative vibe for me. Okay. You know what I mean? And no, it's also super... Co cookie cutter like everyone like there's yeah. no personal expression yeah. mm -hmm. because you. there's no with the with more freedom there's more risk and yeah. it, it depends on the way the mindset of the people that are living there yes. and that comes with the foundation of how they were educated and how they grew up yeah same which thing with that's the, the that's the True. real problem yeah that's which is that's a whole nother yeah thing. topic there yeah. but that's like that's really why you'll go somewhere and those few loose cannons that mess it up and makes people think we need a HOA because yeah. of this one person. Yeah. But what about yeah. the hundred people that were doing it good? True. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm, not right. gonna, I'm not going to I'm not going to punish those hundred people because yeah. of this one loose cannon. We'll deal with him, whatever you got to deal with him. Yeah. In a different way, in a community way or whatever. Yeah. And just be like, hey, just man, stone like, can you just do it? <laughs> no, but that's the issue with the small businesses, yeah. right? Which we've yeah. definitely had to deal with. I'm yeah. going to bring up any, a specific example. Yeah. But the issue is just like with barbers, right? Because we've obviously had this conversation with bringing in barbers to the shop. Yeah. Where barbers usually want to be barbers, and this relates also to small businesses, so that they can do their own thing the way they want to. True. Right? But the way they want to do it is usually not business aligned life. with a professional business environment. Exactly. Boom. Right? Or, yes. safety. So, or safety. Or safety. Ba basic right. safety, yeah. Yeah, like, like as, a, as a whole package deal, right? Mm -hmm. So the same thing happens with small businesses. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, building, I'm doing my own business because I want to do it how I want. And it's like, yeah, but your way is shitty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, the guy who did the, the window graphics on our thing, right? He came in at the lowest price. For obvious reasons. Now, I know that because we worked with him, <laughs> yep. right? Before you hire them, you don't know that. You just go by, you hear the price and you're like, all right, shit, you're half the price of everybody else. Which first red flag goes up always, right? Okay, well, they're half the price, cheaper, you get what you pay for usually. Yeah. Not always though. 
And yeah. if we're on a budget, we're trying to get that low dollar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we went with the guy who did the, the lowest price. Mm-hmm. We sat down with him. We went through the whole design. Everything was all Gucci. We had no red flags. But did you? No, it was perfect. No the red flags. First meeting him. before he got payment was yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> then we paid him at the end of that meeting. Uh, we gave him all the measurements for the windows. There was one, two, three, four windows. Everything was good. He, sh- he tells us two days later it'll be done. We're like, damn, all right. This is mo- we're moving right now. He shows up two days later with all the, the graphics, wrong measurements. He flip-flopped the measurements. So, like, the le- length and width were reversed. Mm. So he couldn't put any graphics up that day. And then tried blaming me for it. Yeah, so his first like response. Like, I got the shit wrong. Instead of just, a, you know, taking accountability, just saying it was a mistake, whatever, he tried to put it on us when we were both sitting there, like, watching his computer. Like, you know what if I mean? If anything, I think that he should have came here in person and measured it to yeah, confirm Just yes, to be safe. To be honest. Yes. If right. you were going that extra mile yeah. of quality service. But then we're doubling the price now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, so then he shows up. So then he comes back, like what? Like four days later? Yeah. He shows back up, like, four days later. And, oh, not even. Because one of his workers shows up to do the windows. And they do, the, they do two, the two big main windows and the door window. Mm-hmm. The only one that came out okay was the, the door, door window. window. Yeah. Because these two, they were, you can still see that giant gap. Mm-hmm. You see it in the perforation? You see yeah. that giant gap? Horrible, horribly done. It was supposed to be almost seamless. And That's... then that window, one of the windows, they just totally forgot about. They didn't even have the graphics for that window. Man, meanwhile, this was, the quote was two days later. Then they come back. The owner's like, I'm going to come out and fix it myself. So he comes back with the wrong measurements to fix that. (laughs) And he only gets up the one that he missed here. Then he's like, look, they gave me the wrong measurements for this. I'm sorry. I'll be back tomorrow to fix it. And I asked him three times. You were here that day. Yeah. And I was like, you're going to be back tomorrow because we open the next day or whatever. And he was like, yes, I'll be back tomorrow. I was like, all right. Like, all you can do is go off the man's word, right? You can't. What are you going to do? Like go to his house and wake him up. You know what I'm saying? Which I would do if I knew where he lived. I would do that. Wake up, nigga. Wake up. So then I go, so then, so then the next day comes, he's not here. That's like, get the fuck out of here. Bro. So it's four, they close at five, it's four o'clock and I start blowing them up. They close at five o'clock. Blowing them up after four and nobody's answering. And I'm like, bro, what the, like, what's going on? Next day, blow them up, nobody's answering. A week later from the day he said, I'll be back the next day to fix the job that was supposed to be done a week ago, I call him, blow him up, no answer. I'm like, yo, what is going on? So I start blowing him up to a crazy extent, like to, like back-to-back calls. The call hangs up, boom, I'm calling back. Call hangs up, boom. Like, y'all crazy. know I'm calling. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because I can't do anything else. That's all I can do. So, uh, so then all of a sudden that day I was in here cutting hair, uh, like practicing. <laughs> and uh and he and i get a call from a random number and i pick up i'm like hello and he's like hey it's ed man how you doing and i'm, I'm already like don't fucking talk to me like that bro <laughs> like i'm not happy with you and he's like hey man i just wanted you to know and i could tell like something's wrong with his voice he's like i just wanted you to know man i just had a stroke mm. and i'm like get the fuck out of here horrible part is the first thing i thought is like you bullshitting ass you ain't have no stroke. But then it's like, okay, come on. He had, he's not going to lie about a stroke, right? You've got to really suck at your small business to lie about that. Yeah. So he had a stroke, and uh, we're Whoa. still waiting on him to come back and fix it. Wow. But he said he's, he said he's, he's all right. He's like, but this it, was already a week after. This is like two weeks, two weeks after. after. Two wow. weeks after. Yeah. That's when he called. Yeah. So the stroke, really, really the, stroke, the stroke, it should have been done way before the stroke happened. Yeah. No, I hope he's better. I mean, I sound stroke. like a dick for not no, caring about the stroke. He's okay. I, I he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. This whole if this time, happened like five days later, the stroke. Yeah. Like, hey, well, what happened those five days, though? I still want to know. No, yeah, that's he what I'm saying. He was preparing for the stroke. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he I'm saying. He was probably eating McDonald's. Yeah. No, fire. And for me, it's like for one. And that's the. So like, at least two days, I yeah. call them after four o'clock. Nobody answers. They close mm-hmm. at five. Like, it's all everything about yeah. this whole experience. It's weird. And what's crazy is he asked me when he rolled up because my car is wrapped. Uh-huh. And he does wrap cars. So he asked me, he's like, who wrapped your car? I was like, oh, I told him who did it. And he goes, uh, who will remain unnamed. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, yeah, they didn't do a good job. It was terrible service. But I'm looking at him like, yeah, it was terrible service. Oh. I'm not happy with it. And he's yeah, like, he's like oh, well, you know, I do car wraps. And in my head, I'm like, bro, this is like your fourth time over here to fix a window. I'm not going to have you wrap a car. Hell no. And then he's like, yeah, I get a lot of people who come to me from them. Da, da, da. And I'm like, bro, this is a terrible experience. The only reason I haven't written a bad review yet is because you're not done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't yeah, want you he to got it in the chamber. Way. It's already in his notes. Yeah, yeah. I already know. Exactly. Reminder. Hey, Reminder. In, in case you didn't know, he's a five-star Yelper. 
Yeah. So like, he's one of those guys that goes into restaurants and be like, just so you know, I have a Yelp card. Oh, and then they try that's and not free food. That's no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I will. But if I am moved heavily on the positive or negative side, I will leave yeah. a review. I'm not like a casual reviewer. So, but if I have a great experience, I'll leave it. Bad experience. So on that topic of running the small business, yeah. though, I'm curious. I want to get their opinion first and then go to you. Is like when someone goes to hire you to do a, a mural or a painting or whatever, like, what type of approach do you do to try and make it like the best quality type of experience for that client? Like how would that, like how would that process go starting from the beginning, them calling you and then how you go about it? Yeah, I think for me, um, the biggest thing, I think for me is, is communication because it's like, well, there, there's, there's a steady amount of communication that happens before whether the client gives creative freedom, wants to see a, a sketch or two. Not a lot of clients, you know, want the sketches and stuff like that. But if they do, I definitely try to bring that to the table. The communication, try to height, you know, heighten the communication. But I think for me, is this really the the product that's created? You know what I'm saying? Like when it gets there, just making sure that you know it just it sets it off. And How gives does a normal a conversation happen? Like, uh, does somebody usually like contact you through uh, like DM through Facebook or something like that? Yeah. So it's usually. We were talking about how powerful Facebook is. Mm-hmm. As of as of recently, Facebook has been the biggest. I do have like nestmurals at gmail.com, so I do have like a contact form on my website. But a lot of people just go straight to Facebook and they'll Facebook me through Nest Murals on Facebook or they'll go to my personal page because now I kinda I just kinda leaned into it and because of how the algorithms work on Facebook, I utilize my personal page as my business page. I just take advantage of it because Mm -hmm. in regard, like take advantage of the fact of of Facebook, you know, like Facebook business pages, they want you to pay to play. Mm -hmm. But when you on your personal page, it's almost like the algorithm's way different. So, and of course it's because, you know, many people will use their personal Facebook as a personal, like that's where they put pictures of their kids and, you know, family. If I get a new haircut, I'm, you know, like I, I put that on my personal page. But when I started understanding the traction that I get on my personal page, comparatively speaking to my business and how I'm not going to give Facebook 20, 30, 50, 100 dollars a month to boost the ad or whatever. I was like, you know what, because I have I have been trying my best to build a base and foundation in central Florida. Facebook has been my best friend. So a lot of it comes through Facebook Hmm. and uh, email. So that's how the initial conversation starts. And this is where. This is actually a pretty cool conversation that we're having because I've never been able to speak on this. But so now they'll initially contact me. I will have a, a, a brief convo with them over DM. But I have a project manager now that, okay. you know, like you want a mural like unless it just kind of depends on the client. Because, with you know, uh, with Elevate, I knew them personally. So I was like, you know what? We're here. Let's make it happen. I knew the time frame was a, like a little closer in regards to like, hey, give it to my project manager, have my project manager reach out to the guys. And then from there, it usually takes some time depending on the client schedule, like who, how, you know, what phone, mm-hmm. what time to call or whatever. But from there, I talk to him, I loop it to my project manager. He will call, email. They'll have a conversation and start like they'll start the conversation of, hey, What's your budget? How you, you know, what are you looking to do? How big is it? And from there, once it's solidified contractually, then I come back after that's been solidified. Mm -hmm. And then I will kind of in turn become a consultant as well. So that's part of the process where I come in, we're consulting. Hey, you want an astronaut? You know, they gave me creative freedom. So that conversation is way different with creative freedom. If there's not creative freedom, then there's definitely a lot of, a yeah. lot of conversations and a lot of sketches and a lot of designs and a lot of color choices and color palettes that are that are looked at and changes and changes. That's why just by the way, this is a random fact. That's why I left. I went to school. I went to UCF for graphic design. That's why I'm not a graphic designer anymore. It was a nightmare for me. Like, you know, that's why I love like, you know, Phil B's doing the website for Elevate. Like, that's why I love seeing him do it. It's his business. He's doing it. Mm-hmm you know, his rules, what his world, however he wants it. But like being a client of somebody that wants yeah. a website, being a client mm-hmm. of somebody that wants like corporate branding, in my experience, it was a total nightmare. Yeah. Because there's so much back and it, forth I, in that world. Yeah. I actually, 
I thought about jumping into that because I enjoy doing it for my businesses. Yeah. Because I'm trying to do four, and I'm doing a logo, a website, all these design stuff yep. for every single business, and I enjoy it. Like, it's fun. But it's because I'm creating something off that free creativity yes. that I get to choose what to do. Yeah. Yeah. But that limitation from clientele, it will be like, eh, I don't like enjoying this. Anymore. I tried it for I tried it for a year, and I, and I got a degree. Yeah. Like, that's what I went to college for, which was insane. I went to college for this. I did it for one year and just got, I was done. And so from there, my journey was like, I did a lot of retail and ultimately, you know, mm-hmm. now I'm a full-time artist. But hey. Hey. What, what was actually your, what, you were going to say something? I was like, whenever somebody pays for something, they expect something. Oh, yeah. 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 Whenever their money is tied to something, they want Absolutely. what they want. You know? yeah. That's why I was going to ask you, on a scale of one to ten, mm-hmm. how much creative freedom do you think we actually gave you for this? More Galaxy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I felt like anytime we said anything to you, as an artist myself, I don't want to. Even if I yeah, have yeah. a thought, it's like I don't want to say it because it's like it's his piece. You feel right. me? This, but then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that's a that's a really good question. I mean, it's almost like it's one of those questions that you don't want to answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. You definitely, um, you definitely don't. Whoo. I know. Right? Okay, I, I give it an eight point five. Woo. Yeah. Like like eight. as it like eight point five because it's like it's it was high. I mean. Yeah. There were only, I think it was the galaxy and a conversation with the striping. Right. But if you think about it, it wasn't that you guys told me no stripes. If you guys would have told me no stripes, I would have been like, dang. Like that was like that. (laughs) That's a big, that's a big thing, guys. Um, I'll be back next week. You'll be like the the scene guy. He's like, uh, where'd you go? Um, but so it would. So this is this is kind of a cool conversation that we're having. I'm getting comfortable, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, I'm getting real comfortable mm-hmm. now. So I say eight point five because there were times where it'd be like, hey, you know, how do you feel about? How would you feel about this? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I appreciate about these guys. The way they approached it was way different than how other people would because they would just be like, more more galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> like they literally would just be like. Oh, cool, cool, but more galaxy. Or <laughs> cool, cool, more teal. Yeah. But they were like, hey, like, how do you feel yeah. about more galaxy? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there were times where we'd like have a conversation and I'd be like, well, this is my thought on it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily want more galaxy, but they'll be like, man, but you know, it'd be kind of dope though. Like, if, <laughs> if, if, if it was a little bit more. Yeah. And so it was like, a, it was this like volley. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a nice professional volley as opposed to like a, I mean, and I, I'll, I'll throw the word friendly in there too, because, you know, I had no point in time that I ever really feel like a client, like client artist relationship yeah. with, with these guys. Like I just, I never did. Cause even with those moments where I was like, Hey, cause I remember if you remember I had pink. Yeah. I remember that. So I remember, and the pink, I remember when I came with the oh, pink, shit, I, I think Philby was the one that was like, so how do you like, how do you feel about the pink? Like, you know, like, how do you, how do you feel about maybe more purple? Yeah. And at that point I was like, well, he didn't say more purple. Full disclosure. I, I like the pink. No, yeah. I, I was fucking with the see, pink. See, and me, t- like, I was going back and forth with the pink. Cause if you guys can see like the background, mm-hmm. right? Like the, in the background, there's stripes. And so the lavender mm-hmm. was a pink. Yeah. And we went back and forth with the pink a and pink. It, was a it was a hot pink. It was the same pink that's inside of the gal in the, the nebula. Yeah. Yep. So where you see the lavender, it was a hot pink. And I remember, I don't, so was it that, was it that you wanted it and you didn't? I mean, since we're here. No. Yeah. Did you, you want a pink and you didn't? I think for me, it was just, I, it, he just loves purple the, the, and the elevate. I feel like he was trying to get it more branded yeah. to the And I yeah, like yeah, the logo. pink actually too. The thing is, it, I did notice that it pulled your eye. Yes. It yeah. like yeah. pulled yeah. your bright. eye away yeah. from the pit. And I remember we had a conversation about that, yep. about the pulling and the moment was just crazy. So sometimes as an artist, you know, I don't want to say my pride got hurt. It wasn't about pride, but it was almost like in my mind, I was like, no, I bet. Like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I, the pink's yeah. in there. It's <laughs> popping. And but I was like, what was funny, though, I was like, you know what? That day, that night, I was like, I think I, I think they want less pink. You know, that I had this moment, I had this moment like in bed, like. I think they want less pink. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pink in the nebula. Yeah. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the pink stripe and I'll do lavender. The moment I hit that lavender stripe, like I'm getting goosebumps, bro. Like the moment I hit the lavender stripe, 
it all made sense. Yeah. Because then the astronaut came to life. Yes. Because the pink, like you were saying, the pink made you almost be like, dang, that's a pink stripe. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. As opposed to being like, bro, the astronaut. Because yeah. the astronaut's the main event. The astronaut's the lead character. Yeah. Every everything else is just a you know it's just a um, like a side quest or the side character. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not supposed to be taking your attention that much. So yeah. mm. that's a that's a cool conversation to have. But I say eight point five because of those convos. Because if they would have just never said anything, it would have been a ten. Like yeah, like yeah. because it's yeah. like well I, I chose pink and I would have walked away. Full disclosure, I would have walked away being like dang that pink. Kind of does pull your eye away yeah, from yeah. the astronaut. It's funny too, but we done here, so I gotta go. It's, it's funny because every that, and that's another thing that was on my mind too. Anytime we talk about something or thought about it, it was like, once it's done, yeah, it's done. It's done. It's done. Like yeah. we need to talk about this now. Yeah. But then, and then, anytime we talked about it, he like we would be talking about any particular thing, and in my head. But the artist part of me was like, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> and then anytime we did say something, it was like when, you, like you said, it was like. So I just want to get your thoughts on this. Yeah, that's and exactly then, how I approached it. And then he would say it, and then, and then I'd be like, what do you think? I'm just thinking. It's just an idea. Just throwing it like, out How there. do you feel about if we – what do you think about this? And yeah, then he'd yeah. be like – Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be like – I'd be like – <laughs> yo, because like, that was, gonna, that's me. Gonna, I, yo, whenever you're in your bag, it's hard to stop. Yes. You. I mean, it's and, hard and, to and stop I, an artist and, whenever they're yeah. like their eye is catching. I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, if there was one night you was going, and I was like, bro, I'm I'm, I'm just letting him go, mm-hmm. you know. And I gotta I gotta step away and then let him do his thing mm-hmm. because I'm not seeing it how you're seeing it because yeah. you're seeing it a whole different kind of way. And I'm like, yo, just let him do his thing. He's in his bag right now. He's got a look in his eye that I'm not, I'm not stopping. And then he would hit me up like, yo, I'm going I'm to tell him this. And then I'm like, I'm over there like, don't piss him off, bro. Don't piss him off. I don't want him to paint that pissed off. Like, don't know. Don't it's piss like him the off. energy behind everything. is. is it I was going to say, I'm like imagining a teeter-totter between the client and the artist. Yes. And it's absolutely. like, it goes back and forth where at least luckily he's an artist and they were more understanding and trying to like not control you with it yeah but also kind of seeing their perspective but even as an artist it's good to get the client's perspective because sometimes you might not see things as the artist as you're going because really both of you don't know the end product because even though you have a vision for it the art is created during the process and you're kind of adjusting and involving it as you're doing it because even the same thing with film it's like there's the storyboard then there's the recording of it First off, there's a script, then there's the idea, then the storyboard, then the recording of it creates a whole other movie. Then mm-hmm. the other movie is the editing, and then there's the final editing. So there's actually like four movies while you're doing it because it <laughs> evolves into something else. And it's the same thing with like this scenario yeah. where I could – because you changed – I mean, obviously, I was here too in this yeah. no AC for no fucking oh. – like, <laughs> My for God. for like three weeks, but it was, hot. It was but, wild. The conditions yeah. were wild. Not, yeah. just being real, and they they didn't have any you know uh, control over that. Yeah, but yeah. the conditions were one of the craziest conditions I've painted. <laughs> <in there>. But <laughs> but real quick, yes, I know because I want to make sure like, I say this. It was a fucking war zone. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> we all had our shirts off. Like yeah. nah. I changed my shorts at least twice a day. <laughs> yeah, no, this guy would just like change his shorts. I'd be like, bro, yeah. like I'm here. He's like, my bad. Yeah, luckily, I have some pictures of him <laughs> not changing his shorts. Like, but I need to be my bad. I'm excited and I want to make sure that I say this because you know so the birth of shock style started here Ooh, and i gotta yeah. i gotta talk about this because the teeter-totter that you're talking about and i just and i hope that you know that's not i'm just being real and honest because if i oh yeah it was a 10 so that's why i said like 8.5 right yeah. but the beauty of it is that because of because of the the, the question not questioning i never felt questioning but like because of the conversations and how I was approached about that in regards to the direction of the piece, when I remember, I, I'm trying to remember the day that I decided to, to try it, to just try these sharp lines. And I was kind of scared because when I first attacked the wall, I call it attacking, when I first attacked the wall, it was very loose, it was very, um, you know, um, curvy, rounded. You know, just like regular, like how, how fabric would normally be on a spacesuit. And I was like, I think I'm going to go this direction. And I, I started doing it, and I didn't really get any pushback from it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, it wasn't like, how do you feel? How do, are you going to do the whole thing like that? Like, it wasn't anything like that. And it was almost like this moment when I started doing the crazy edges, 
it felt like I had arrived at a place that I've been praying for for a long time. And when I finished this astronaut, I was like, this is it. Like, I actually recently did a, a mural at my high school at my alma mater. I, I saw it. I based it off of, thank you so Amazing. much. I based it off of this, off of the astronaut. So the cool thing about Elevate and this year, so God gave me a word this year, was Elevate. Ooh. So Elevate's my word for the year. It's, it's divine. Like, this is a divine appointment. Me being here, um, doing the, the mural. You know, I met Philby at Life Design. Shout out Jay and Johnny at Life Design. Um, I met Philby there. And that's where our connection started. And I remember from the jump, it was like your first day. And, you know, usually when you go around the room and people are like, hey, you know, is there anything you would change or anything that you would do differently with like anything? So we were talking about the discord. And I remember he has shared like, yeah, man, I think the discord should be a little bit more like broken into sections and there should be different rooms in the discord. And I just remember sitting there being like, I don't know this dude. And like, People don't usually answer that kind of a question, yeah. but this dude's like straightforward. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, it was like the shining light on him. And I'm oh, like, stop, nah. yeah, man. I, 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 had a lot, yeah, I had a lot of respect. He was trying to figure out if you were a I woman. didn't know where it was at. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to be like, is like, that a man, girl? What's going on? <laughs> this guy girl got to go on. on there. <laughs> so, uh, Sir, so, ma'am. <laughs> so I was like, man, this dude's dope. And I mean, from there, I, I think we swapped numbers or something. And then we just started talking. And then he started talking to me about how, you know, him and his boy Gonzo were going to open a barbershop. And, of course, you hear that. I've heard that a long time, man. You know, for me, I'm not a barber, but I absolutely love barber culture. Yeah. Like, I love barber shops. I love what it is, what it means, the camaraderie, the what happens in it. And especially if you're in a city for a long time and, you know, barbers get to watch kids grow up. It's just a beautiful, yeah. like, yeah. Barbering is just a beautiful, you guys, just to give you your flowers, like you guys are in a position where you can just bring life. It's very life-giving. Sure. You know, you're cutting up a, a girl or a guy, you know what I'm saying? And you're cutting them up. And how somebody feels when they step off of a chair, it's like, yeah, you paid for that, but that's, that's a priceless feeling. Yeah. Like when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, bruh, like, I love this haircut. Or like... You go on on a date or something and your date or your girl's like, bro, like, that's a nice cut. Yeah. Or your mom is like, oh, wow, you know, so handsome, you know, or whatever, you know, or you're, you're getting a haircut for an event. Like, to me, barbering is, it's like an apex of, like, self-love. Yeah, like, sure. it's just like this, this confidence. Like confidence booster. Yeah. I, can, I can literally be wearing a paper bag, right? And if I got a haircut, I feel like a million dollars, bro. And I, I do it all the time because I'm always looking crazy covered in paint. But if I got that haircut, bro, you didn't have to tell me nothing, bro. Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll go to, what is it, um, Mark Steakhouse, you know what I'm Hell saying, yeah. looking crazy. But if I got a haircut, I'll walk in there like I own the place. Hell yeah. But I just giving you all your flowers, man, because, you, you know, Thank being, you, being barbers and owning a barbershop, saying that you're going to do it and doing it. And I've only known these guys, real talk, probably three months. Yeah. And in the span of three months, they literally – Talk it like they walk it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like it. they talk it like they walk it. Walk you know it. what I'm saying? They walk it like they talk it. You know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. So I appreciate you guys. Thank man. you, bro. Doing it big, man. Thank you, bro. Hey, we appreciate you coming through for the for the thing, bro. Because yeah. like I said, the day I called him twice, he ignored me. <laughs> then we were doing the back to school event, yeah. and he just happened to pull up right when we were finishing. We were loading up the chairs in his, in Gonzo's truck. Yeah. And then we actually. It started raining like right at the same time and they were closing up the thing. So we actually had like three or four chairs we would have had to leave outside and come back for. Mm -hmm. And he pulls up with the gallery truck like, what's up? <laughs> and it's like, damn, bro, we're done. And then he was like, I got an empty truck. Like, y'all want to fit them in here? And we were like, hell yeah. So <laughs> Perfect then, time. And then, yeah, yeah, so we put him in his truck to bring drive back and we had to pass this shop to go where we were going. Yeah. So then when we were on the road, I saw him and I was like... Let me. He's here yeah. now. I was like, yeah. he's, not, he's gonna ignore my call if I call him. Let me just pull him up. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me just pull him up. So we pulled up, and I was like, "Yo, this is it." But it was white. It was empty. White in here, completely empty. And he was like, "I was like, that's the wall, bro." And then right when you said that, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be fire." Because yeah. I knew we needed the piece. Like mm -hmm. that was part of my vision from the beginning. Like we need a whole art wall, like this whole yeah. mural vibe. Especially because then when you take pictures of the haircuts. And everything yeah, is always it's back a, there. I and know. then it's like the staple of the shop. Like when you think of – for me, if I have a client who goes to another barbershop, they usually don't remember the name of the shop usually. Yeah. So I'll ask them like, 
what it looked like in there. Because yep. if you say something, I'll know which barbershop you're talking about. You can just uh, okay, remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So now we, we have it like no, when everyone comes in here, if somebody asks them, yo, what shop you go to? It's like, oh, the one with the big ass astronaut or like that big space painting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's yeah. what we want you to remember, you know, take away from. Would you would you say there was anything that was a struggle while doing the mural, like uh, some type of obstacle that you might have like had in the process? Nah, I mean, for me, and this is just being transparent, sometimes with creative freedom, though, like, I might not necessarily show it, but in the midst of creative freedom, even if I have a design, because naturally, like, I switch up, just like Shock Style was born, that wasn't, I wasn't going to do those sharp edges. So... What do you call it? Shock Style? So it's like block, like, uh, so sharp and blocky. Mm. So shock. Ooh. So Shock Style. So I just put those two words together. I like it. So, you okay. know, you see a chunky line, sharp at some edges. And it kind of looks like if you get shocked. Yeah. Like, like ah, those kind of jolts. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. But I, I would say, you know, really, it would be me versus me. Because I would come in and be like, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not feeling it. Or like in the beginning when I started the Nebula, I wasn't feeling it because I was like, well, I don't know if I'm just going to kind of just spray it and kind of just do like little overspray. But then... I have pieces of styrofoam that I was like, man, if I break up the styrofoam on the edges, it can look like clouds. And that's how nebulas look like. But that wasn't, it literally was, they had, because they got, they had the Huskies in here, uh, not the dogs, but the, yeah, the the drawers, the Uh, the toolboxes. (laughs) So they had the tool, the Husky toolboxes in here and all the, you know, the innards of the box was there with the styrofoam. And I'm like, what if I just kind of play around with the styrofoam? So it's almost like this game that I play, but Mm -hmm. it, it is frustrating at times because you're just trying to kind of figure out as you go. That's just how. Which is the amazing part of just life in general. Exactly. Thing. It's the journey. I always, you know, speaking on that, to me, art, like life is art. It's just, it is a journey. It never starts, it never finishes how you start. I mean, even if you plan it, anything, an event, there's always a little tweak. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, whether a wedding, a grand opening, mm-hmm. a painting. It's like you want it to look just like this, but life isn't that. It's just not that clear cut. Yeah. It's just not that perfect. So yeah, it's like I, I look at it as life is kind of like a, a rainforest, where it's like it might seem chaotic when you look at it. There's animals, all these things intertwining, plants, all these things, but there's actually a foundational system within the rainforest, and that's yeah. kind of how life is. It's very complex and interconnected, and it looks chaotic. But it actually is not chaotic at the same time yeah. because there's a certain foundation to like that expression of life. It's like harmonious. Yeah. Yes. I'm glad we decided to do documentary. Yeah. 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 The documentary. I was just gonna say, my favorite part of this whole experience was just the bond that we. I feel like we created. Yeah. yeah. Us four. Yep. Like yeah, yeah. throughout that process, even though this isn't my barbershop or it's not. My mural, even I was recording, it's just being part of the experience. And then yeah. it felt like we were hanging out with yeah. our friends yeah. while also doing what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Which is like, wild. Like going off of that, like it's not my barbershop, but there's a sense of ownership that I, and pride that I have with this mm-hmm. place. Just because, you know, and there, there's a lot of other barbershops, period, in Ocala specifically. And I, I'm friends with some owners of barbershops in Orlando. Um, but with this one in particular, just getting to know Philby and Gonzo, you know what I'm saying, as owners, knowing their heart, knowing that they're family guys, you know, they they love people. They're not here for the foolishness, you know what I'm saying? They're just mm-hmm. here for, to me, what, what it's supposed to be about, you know what I'm saying? Life isn't supposed to just be about work, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, we do work and we work hard and we build things like – they built this place. This was their vision. Um, this was literally a white box when they first walked in it. Now it's not. It's this, it's a barbershop slash, you know, podcast studio yeah. slash event space. Like, yeah. we had a grand opening last night that was amazing. My poker man pop, room. Poker room. My man popped <laughs> bottle. Like, popped yes, the Bel Air in yeah. here. While I was eating avocados. Yeah, yeah. man. Hey. And so, I, it's just... I don't know. It's just really cool. I do feel a sense of ownership and pride yeah. because I was a part of it. Yeah. And there's a gel happening here. Yeah. So I'm excited for the for the documentary. Y'all going to see it that one, unfold that's on the big fire. screen. And I know because 
Well, I just to piggyback. Yeah. Just to piggyback on that. I I'm agree sure. 100%. And it felt, I, I remember telling you guys, like, towards the end when it was almost done, yeah. that it was kind of sad. Yeah. That was like, Bitter, sweet feeling. Yeah. Like, like the, the exciting journey of doing it all mm-hmm. was coming to a close, like, coming in here ready mm-hmm. to sweat your ass off and just be in here doing whatever we got to do yeah, next. Yeah. And, like, and then the fact that you know, like, I, I don't know, for me, the idea of having it in documentary, like, in a non-egotistical way is just cool because we have the story. The experience. Because yeah. I remember, you know, it. the old school, you know, having home videos and shit, right? <laughs> and like throwing in a random video that doesn't have a writing or name nope. on it and you watch it and you're like, yo. Yeah, with the family. Like I remember <laughs> that. Look at him. Look at him. And it's like, I knew that later down the line, because I remember when I first told you we were going to do a documentary, he was like, okay, you're on your Kanye shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I wouldn't Some necessarily genius shit, say yeah. that, but it was just, I, I, I was slightly inspired by seeing those things because it's like, you, you forget when you're caught up in the mix of everything. You kind of, there's bits and pieces that maybe you forget and you can't visualize or you forget to really soak in that moment yeah. of being there. And like, you know, this moment is a memory in like in a second. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, boom, it's gone. So to have somebody and not only, you know, you're doing something, we're doing other things. So to have somebody whose full, sole purpose is to be there and just catch different parts of that yeah. experience. And I know you didn't even expect anybody to be in here when you took the job for the mirror. No, not at all. So, I, didn't, I, I didn't know. And so you had hit me up and you were like, well, uh, yeah, you hit me up and you were like, hey, just let you know. This was after the fact. And I, I wanted to say one more thing before I wrap up that part and uh, just giving them their flowers. Like a lot of people, a lot of clients will teeter totter, go back and forth with price and this and this and this. These guys are about their business, man. I gave them a price. They paid. It was like it was you just knew they were just on. They were yeah. just on a whole different level. Ready to go. So they were ready to go. But um, just want to make sure I said that. <laughs> we but had that bag ready. They had that bag. Ba- <laughs> they had that bag ready. <laughs> they weren't playing games. Um, but no, like the documentary is gonna be dope. And then he he told me after the fact, hey, I got my boy Chris is gonna be there. And I remember, I don't know if you remember, I was like, hey man, do you um? Yeah, I didn't even know how to ask him. I was like, do you think he might like? Maybe take a picture or two. Of oh, me. I remember. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I felt so like yeah. I didn't want to impose, and I was like, because yeah. I didn't know you at all. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, hey, do you think maybe like he could just take a couple little snippets of video or or pictures of me, bro? Th- little did I know <laughs> that it would just be it would just be a journey. Yeah. Like it wasn't like mm-hmm. it, it wasn't like I was like, hey, bro, do you mind like taking a picture? No, it was almost just like. My man's would like set up yeah. a situation, full bro. production, full studio. production, and it, the camera was just always rolling. Yeah. It wasn't like, "Hey, Chris, can you take a picture?" No, no, no. It was like he was just taking pictures and taking video, and he was in and out, and you know, get. <laughs> I, I I keep remembering. You know, I don't know. I, maybe you'll edit this out, but this is the moment with the leasing sign. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! And I remember that. Came, that was hilarious. He came later. <laughs> that was. <laughs> And we were like, oh, you want the sign back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have it right here. We have it right here. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, Chris has captured everything. And it was just so much I forgot much I fun. captured that. Actually. Yeah. That's hilarious. And so and I was going to ask you, like, you know, filming it and, and reviewing some of it. Like, how have you felt seeing some of the tape? And it's just, it's after just the fact. funny. Yeah. To be honest, because it's kind of. <laughs> He's like, it's hilarious. It's, you guys are a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you guys did it. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, it was uh, for me because obviously this is my going to be my first film. Let's go. I feel like sir. let's go. Which you know, for it's what good. I want my vision for Conley Film Productions to be, it's like this. I feel like I have leveled up so much because I took this like serious yeah. when I was doing it. Like I'm not, over, I wasn't like playing around. Well, we like, paid you, so you yeah. better be taking. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but bare minimum. Yeah, but, but some people get paid and don't do that. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. It's like the bare minimum. But <laughs> I, look at the camera when he says. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like doing that, the yeah. journey of just recording and the the level, my my experience points has gone to a whole nother level, yeah. and even the progression of like I'd use all pretty much all the money that I got from you guys to buy and upgrade the the, Love the elevate elevate so, to elevate myself. So. Um, like that experience was just amazing, and I actually feel like I fell in love with documentary yeah. stuff even more than what I was already at because 
the experience, the connection, like I, I'm, I'm recalling back the first time here I was recording, right? And then the first time that I went on a car ride with you back to your, your studio, mm-hmm. and I was just like, bro, because I, I already wanted to make documentaries about just like stuff about the world because I want to make inspiring documentaries. That's my whole thing is inspiring documentaries about whether it's the truth, enlightenment, whatever. And when I went with him, that was the first time I had like, I was in the car with somebody. That you didn't know. Yeah, asking him questions, doing that, and then going into the studio that I've never been to before. And it was like a friendship that was creating. And I'm imagining like, bro, I'm gonna be doing this with all these other people that I can make documentaries with. And it's amazing, I could be in the Himalayan mountains or something doing this. Oh, yeah. And then doing that with you guys when you're out going to car with you guys and ask stuff like getting drunk was, at Lowe's. It was a great oh, experience. Like, yeah, I, I actually wanted to ask you guys, too, how it felt like when I would go and follow you guys. And I had, you know, obviously I had the headphones on the camera and it feels weird, I'm sure, at first. But yeah. I felt like you guys were getting more comfortable That's with me dope. just following you, so yeah. even no matter where we were going, like whether it's Lowe's or. The depot, the, the restaurant, depot. Home depot. I'm like, no, we depot on out. Have you been there yet? No, bro. We it's all amazing. might just have to pull up. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna have That's to. Good. We bro, should. what do you we'll think? Y'all oh, let you go first. About the camera? Yeah. yeah. Like the how first, you felt The about first it. thing I noticed was obviously other people looking. Oh, yeah. 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 Obviously me That's acting, dope. me, me, me being me, mm-hmm. I'm obviously going to be looking at my surroundings. <laughs> yes. And I, and I, and you obviously see people looking at you. Like yeah. Yeah. you see a camera, somebody's going to be looking at you. Yeah. And then you see somebody that it looks professional. Like, who the fuck are these guys? What yeah. are they doing yeah. here? Yeah. They're yeah. in Publix. What are we doing in Publix? <laughs> we're filming. We're getting subs here. You know, like, what are we doing here? You know, so it's like, it was weird to do that because that was my first time but that shit was crazy yeah. and you get used yeah. to it like who gives yeah. a fuck what people think exactly and, and, and you could look if you want to you're gonna see it sometime yeah. soon yeah. <laughs> you know oh yeah exactly. you go, you go hear about i think that's the coolest part for me too is like getting past the the getting past the look because you not not that i care when they're looking but you're trying to like goof off or like talk to your boy or like do whatever you're trying to do with people staring at you yes right so it's like i don't care that you're looking but it feels weird yeah. that I'm being doing my own yeah. thing, and I I can see like right now I'm looking at you guys. But if there was people behind you, I would be able to see them watching us. Yeah, it's like so, it's like your real life is on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, and then yeah. you think about the people who do vlogs and stuff like that yeah. everywhere. everywhere. And it's and then you like you said once you start to after after like an hour you're like okay well I'm not gonna not be normal you know what I'm saying yeah, so it's yeah. like whatever. And then you, and then what you don't care anymore. You actually notice that people stop caring. Yeah. yeah. Like once you yeah. act like they're not looking, then nobody gives a shit. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And then, and then one guy even pulled up to us at Publix. He was like, "What, what kind of shenanigans? What did he say? What spoof? He said, yeah. What spoof you guys <laughs> he said, doing? Today? He said, "What, what kind of spoof you guys doing today? Oh. And it's like. This ain't no spoof, bro. This is an Elevate Barbary documentary, dog. They yeah, see a camera and yeah. just automatically think you up to some bullshit. Like, yeah, you up to something. Like, you about to be doing something crazy right some now, pranks, some jackass some shit, pranks, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. Nah, bro. Especially oh, in, in, Publix? A, in a Publix. I was about to say, yeah. oh, you about to throw a, some, a gallon of milk in the air and fall yeah. on the ground or something? Yeah, and it's just it's funny because you had no intention of doing that. No. And then you walk into Lowe's and they jump you like you're, yeah. like, like you're about to sell drugs or oh. fight in there. Something yeah. happened? Yeah, they came up on us because they were not allowed to film in, in Lowe's. Oh, yeah. oh what's bro. going on in Lowe's? Why, they came why, up, why y'all hiding they, Lowe's? They came up three deep. Yeah, and like rolled up on yeah. them like, yo, what's up? What's y'all actually, Like trying to press us. And I'm like, what? what? No, like actually very rudely. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all, you got that on rude. camera? Uh, the beginning part. Ooh, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some, some drama. Some drama. Some drama. Yeah, drama. Yeah, drama. <laughs> yeah. And then, no, Philby went off, and I oh. should have recorded that. Oh, dang. I did go, because they pissed me off. Well, yeah. Because yeah. after, yeah. it was after the initial interaction. started following us. Yeah, because so, mm. so three dudes came up on us, including, I guess, the manager, a store manager. Store manager and assistant store manager. Yeah. Then after it was like, all right, cool, we won't record whatever, we, go, we keep walking, we're shopping, doing our own thing, and we walk on the other side. We're on the other side of Lowe's at this point. And we had turned around, and when we turned around to move, I noticed that the assistant manager who had came up on us was right behind us. Mm. And when we turned around and kind of like shifted in another direction, he kind of like froze. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of looked at me like, "Oh shit, he caught me." Yeah. And then he was kind of going back and forth, and then we kept walking, and he was he he followed us, and I'm like, I was like, "Yo, can we help you? Like, what what yeah, are you doing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like. He's like, oh, I, I just have to make sure you guys don't film. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You already told us we're not filming. It's over. Yeah. And then, uh, and then he's like, well, you guys got the camera. And I was like, everybody in this building has a camera, has a camera. on them. And the, you're not going to yeah. follow me around. Like, 
And then he had to go find the district manager. And the district manager pulled up, and he was all, like, stocky and shit. He comes up mad professional and nice. And he's like, well, listen, your problem's not with me, right? Your problem's not with me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, why is he following me? Like, that's the end of the story. But anyway, that's what happened at Lowe's. Wow. Yeah. But, Crazy uh, Lowe's. Yeah. That was the second time I seen Phil be disgruntled. First time, <laughs> City of Ocala. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, I don't get upset much, yeah. very often. And even then, I wasn't mad. It was just frustration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I was actually, somebody following us. Like, I, you already told us that exactly. not to do something. I, we put it down, and now you're not trusting us. Now you're fucking following us like we're like yeah, like, like we're some fucking criminals or yeah. something. Like back the fuck up. I actually you know I actually talked to Philby, I think that same night or later on, and I was talking to him about the experience. Cause obviously I'm just focused on the camera. Like I literally just look at the screen and I'm just yeah. like not even paying attention. I'm just trying to get look at the screen. But afterwards I told him about how cause me and Philby, and I can only speak for Philby because obviously we know each other yeah. uh, that, that deeply. Mm. No, no. <laughs> I already knew that was coming. I already, yes. I already knew. First one. Mm. So, <laughs> so like, I was telling him how it's crazy because we don't really get angry. Yeah, right. But we use the emotions of anger to as a tool. That's good. Because it's a tool to emphasize certain things. So like, mm. he's not. He's fine internally, but he's using that the. Anger, which is what you're associating with him talking louder, yeah. talking a specific way. Yeah. That, that, as that anger. tone. Yeah. That tone. The tone. And it's that energy Delivery. or frequency that he's delivering out so that you can pay attention more and realize, no, this is serious. Because if we would love to just be nonchalant, hey, yeah, no, I think we should do this. And just say it casually and normally, but most people don't react to that. They have to have somebody say something in a certain tone mm -hmm. as a tool to do that. But, oh, this, not guy, this guy ain't playing around. Yeah. He's not gonna, he needs to get out of here. We need to get this guy out of here quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When in reality, we're just like, we're just chilling. We yeah. just, we're, I didn't want to have to do this, but I have to now in order for you to realize you need to do this or yeah. that. Yeah. I got to make and an example out of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Because it's funny because I'm, I'm sitting there, right? And I remember I'm talking about the city when we were at the city for the power. Mm -hmm. I. I don't think you know what we're talking about. No, so, no he doesn't. Know. Um, we had to go. To, so we had the inspection done, or we got the work done in here, the plumbing, electrical, whatever. Yeah. And we had to go to um, what was it? Oh, to just to get the power turned on because the guy did the inspection that morning, and then he pulled up and was like, uh, "All right, the inspection's good." You, so I was like, "Okay, so we can go to the city and get the get what we need, like the the power turned on. We're good to go." So we go up to the window, and all of a sudden, the lady's like, oh, well, you, need, you still need to have... Meanwhile, this is like the day before. The day before we're supposed to open. The day before we're supposed to open, yeah. And she's like, and we did everything they told us the entire time, right? And she's like, actually, it looks like you guys need to have this inspection done, and we need to have this, 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 and this. And we're like, what? Like, what? This came out of left field. You never told us anything about this. And they're like, yeah, we can't do anything about the power. And I'm over here like, dude, I got mad haircuts to do, like... Yeah. I got appointments booked up, and I had just taken a week off because I went on the scuba trip. So I had, I had to catch up, right? And I'm like, yo, I have nowhere to cut hair. Like, I have to be in there. So she Wait, tells me hold that. Hold on. Did you see his photo for the scuba trip? No, I didn't. He has the photo of the year. But we'll, talk, we'll show you later. Yeah, but. We'll, we'll show you later. Ooh, it's fine. Right. But, but anyway, so I was like, yo, I have to cut hair. And all of a sudden, I could feel, and I know they're right behind me, right? And I, as soon as she says that, my heart dropped mm. because in my head, I was like, I knew something was going to come up. So I'm sitting there on the other side of this glass, and the first thing I'm thinking of is like, I have to flip out. Like, I have to flip out. But what am I going to do? Because you, there's a certain limit of yeah. flipping out, yeah. right? Like, you can't get too wild or nope. too belligerent with the words and get nasty because you still have to get them to do something for you. You know what I mean? But you have to show enough urgency. So it was, it was literally when I put my head down, I remember the moment. I'm in the mirror. She tells me they can't turn on the power. And I put my head down like this. Mm. And I'm literally analyzing mm -hmm. how to react. Like, I remember this. And I, that Meanwhile, he's also thinking, he's like, well, Chris is recording right now, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, and that, I, I wasn't even paying that much attention to that because I actually was like, yo, they're not turning on the power. Like, I was like, I have to do something. Like, I can't just walk away from this counter and be like, yeah, we have no power. Cancel all my appointments. But I'm like, but I can't get too crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I instantly was just like, I went to like kind of like a heartbreak mode. Yeah. Like it was like heartbreak, like what? Like you let me down. Like I'm depending on this. You know what I'm saying? And then she wasn't letting up. So then I had to get a little angry. 
You know what I mean? I was like, okay, the heartbreak ain't working too well right now. She don't really give a shit about the soft boy shit. Yeah. Like, I, she likes that aggressive shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she responds like, better. Yeah. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, let's pump up the volume. Let's get a little yeah. frustrated. And uh, so this is like what's happening in my mind. And I'm like, all right, what do you... I was like, no, we did everything you told us. And that's another thing too. Because I, I kept emphasizing how everybody in there gave us all the instructions. Yes. Like we did, and, then I was, and then I went to like... We did everything you asked for. We did everything you asked for. What more do you want from me? (laughs) Like you're a general at war. Yeah, bro. Like Braveheart. I was on my knees in a symbolic way. I was on my elbows on the counter like this. Like, what do you mean? Like, and then I just, it's funny because I'm I'm trying to imagine what their faces look like behind me. Because I know they're probably. And why everyone's acting so casual about just giving us power. We have the money to pay for it. We've done everything you guys have asked us. We just need the electric power turned on. Because I know they're probably like, <laughs> man. And then, come I'm, on and now. then I'm, I'm wondering what he's thinking because I and I didn't want to break the moment. I couldn't like turn around and talk to him because I was like, no, I gotta keep yeah, this, yeah. this yeah. energy intensity. right here. Intensity. Yeah. Intensity. Yeah. And then the I had to keep. Happen. And then I had to keep going. And I noticed she was breaking down a little bit. Oh. And I was like, okay, like getting a little like a little like oh like. And then her uh, lady came out, who I guess was her supervisor. And I was like, all right, we're getting somewhere. I was like, I was like, I need to talk because she was basically saying like, my word is bond, like that's it, it's yeah. over. There's nothing like. There was like, y'all need to put me with somebody because some shit's going down in here. Like yes. what? And then finally, the lady came out and she basically says the exact same thing that she said. I'm like, why'd you even come out here? Yeah. Like, what was the point of that? And then she finally got to go um, uh, across the hall to talk to, I guess, her big boss. Yeah. And uh, we're sitting there in the office. She's like, okay, look, we're gonna see if we can do this. Okay, we're gonna see. I don't know. But I'm going to ask him if you could just yeah. have a seat, if you could just calm down. Okay, if you can calm down and have a seat. And I'm like... Which I felt like he wasn't even I like, wasn't crazy. Yeah. Like, I, I felt like he was just like a normal upsetting. Like, you guys don't have people like this all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're you guys I, literally I are horrible. Yeah, I wasn't going wild, yeah, but right. I was, it was my tone, tone. Yeah. and the volume. It was mm-hmm. up. You and it was, I mean? it was a pretty big echo in there, too. There was yeah. just we us the in only there. Ones, yeah. yeah. Everybody, then, everybody can hear us. Yeah, <laughs> everybody can hear for yeah. sure. But at this point, I'm like, yo, we got to get this done. Yeah. So anyway, they tell us to sit down, and we're sitting down. And then we're like kind of keeping the game face on because they can still see us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, yo, I hope, bro, I hope. I don't hope they don't come at us with some bullshit. Like, yeah, we can't do nothing about this. What this guy doing over here, dog? Uh, oh, shit, we got a special guest dog. in the building. Special guest worm, What's bro. What's up, man? Come on in, bro. I thought I locked that door. <laughs> come in, bro. Oh, oh, just step you right. could you could have a seat on the on the cooler and shit. What up, dog? Or the ottoman? That's softer. Oh yeah, true. you can move wherever you want. There's what beers up, in there if you want to get lit. Guys, give me some love, yeah. man. Hey, what up, dog? Yeah, yeah. Say what up, man. This is our good friend, this childhood guy. friend. What's, what's up, bro? Up? Nice to meet you, Jonathan. Gonzo. What's good? What's good? What up, dog? Damn, full party up in here. Nice to meet you, bro. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, so they had told us to sit down and I was looking at Gonzo and I'm just like, I'm looking at him like, yo, I hope they do something, bro. Yeah. And then I know, and then this is when I started to think like he's recording the whole time too. Yeah. Oh, wow. So then I'm thinking like, I don't know if that's going to work in our favor or against us. Right. So, so, uh, so they come back out and finally the lady, right, the, the, the one who would, like her supervisor who had come out, yeah. she calls me up and I'm like, oh, shit. And she's kind of like, kind of like in a corner, like oh, kind of okay. like, it looks like she's scared, the body language. Yeah, yeah, like she's yeah. not, and I'm just kind of like, maybe I was too aggressive. Yeah. No, but then she told me, she was like, look, uh, we talked to the inspector, we're going to have him go out today, da, 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 da. Anyway, end of story, we got it worked out. But... The fact that they get me in that mode is like I told and I told him I was like, bro, I do not like getting like that, but you have to use that tool yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Like you have to. Then at the store, that just pissed me off. Like there's no reason for you to be following me around. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. But it's just those little moments that come up, and it's like if you know me as a person, if you see me often, you probably have never seen me mad. No, I've never. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't get mad. If anything, I just get annoyed at something, mm-hmm. and I might like talk shit about it, but I'm not angry. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. just gonna talk shit about it because why not? But anyway, that, that was a story about the, what happened at the, um, the, the city. Man. And I'm glad he got it on film because I was wondering, like, damn, maybe they yeah. knew, like, oh, my God, they're going to put this up somewhere. They're recording. Let's yeah. help them out. It might have yeah. had to play the factor in True. Yeah. to be yeah. honest. Some drama. Uh, drama. Yeah, exactly. We should start storming out of there. Fuck this place. <laughs> <laughs> but that's always the worst part, dealing with, like, the local governments. Because yes. mm-hmm. we worked there, for the government. Like, yeah. working for the government, you know nothing productive is happening. There's no there. sense of urgency. <laughs> yeah. no. From what I've noticed, there's no sense of urgency 
because there's no, in, in my opinion, there's no accountability for them because they can operate at whatever pace that they want because yeah. they're in charge. Yeah. They're literally the ones running the world. So they're like, well, yeah, we're just going to do it next week. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Nothing. You literally can't do nothing. And nothing's detrimental to them because everything has to funnel to them. Yep. So there's like, they're in a position of power where there's like, okay, and, yeah, we're going to do it next week and that's it. It was like, like lunchtime. Yeah. And I know nothing <laughs> happens after lunchtime. <laughs> like all the Especially work in a government. Especially if fruit. Yeah. All yeah. the work in a government building happens before lunch. Because after lunch, yeah. it's an hour to chill and digest the lunch. And then it's just wrapping up all the shit you started in the morning that yeah. you didn't mm-hmm. finish. And then it's like, oh, well, I guess I should just leave that for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like lunchtime comes, you just give since, up. Since we're on the topic of service, I wanted to go back to that original question I asked him with like, what would be your, walk through your experience of like a client and what you would want them to experience coming to you as a barber, like coming in here and setting an appointment and meeting you as a barber and stuff. Like what are the, some of the focuses yeah. that you actually like want or maybe you've seen other barbers do that you would like, this is why I don't want to do that. Because I want to do it this way, so it's a, a positive experience. So one word, communication. Yeah. Communication is like everything. And then one word for barber, stylist, whatever, consultation. You figure out what they want as a client, and you get that, you curate that in your mind, and what are you working with? And then you go through their hair and seeing what you can do, and then you give them what they want. You know, it's it's easy. It's a, it's customer service at the end of the day. You, mm-hmm. you you're talking to somebody. You're you're getting what they want. And then giving it to them and delivering, you know, and do you feel, do you feel like in your experience from the barbers that you've been around that there might be a lack of customer yes. service in, in barbers? <laughs> yes, yeah, a hundred times. That's yeah. the, I because the because whenever whenever you 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 sit in a barber's chair, you say you say uh, you say probably like two words: uh, taper fade, a fade, mid fade, whatever. Yeah. And then the, how much on the top? That's it. And then. Yeah. Then the barber goes and does their own thing after that, yeah. their and it's own. It, their their own thing exactly, and do, doesn't try to get what the client actually wants. Yeah, and that's that's client retention is whenever whenever you do something that they want and do it to the highest level possible. But most of the time, you don't get that communication. That's where that their haircut gets fucked up because you didn't give them what they wanted. Yeah. Maybe you gave them a fire ass cut, but that's not what they wanted. Yeah. So they're going to think, oh, it's it was a bad shit. haircut. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the fade could be crispy. The line could be dope. But that's not what they wanted. Mm-hmm. And, but you didn't even know what they wanted because you didn't even ask. Yeah. Yeah. You skipped the whole consultation part. Yeah. So that's what barbers mm-hmm. lack. They, they don't lack the ability because everybody can do a great haircut. Yeah. You know, that's easy. But what can you provide the client of a haircut that they actually want? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's, all they, that's all you really need to do is just drop the ego and drop everything else. What do they want? What do you want? I'm here to service you. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm here to make sure that your experience is the best. And the experience is a whole nother part, you know, other than the haircut. Yeah. It's how you're approaching, how you're talking to them, the conversation, feeling like you care and yeah. putting your, uh, your zeroing in on the client itself yeah. and not anything else. You, you see barbers, they, they got their fucking headphones in or they're talking on the phone. Yeah. Clients don't like that shit. You know, you got to be professional. Like you got to be professional yeah. at the end of the day. You got to give the client what they want. And you got, clients want to feel like they're uh, appreciated and everything is going to them. You know what I'm saying? So that's where you get your value. I would say, I would say even now also in recent times, because obviously when me, we were growing up, we remember haircuts were like 10 bucks. Right. But now you're talking 30 plus right. haircuts. Right. 40 at Elevate, baby. Yes, so, sir. <laughs> so it's like. With that amount of money now going to somebody, you kind of expect more as yes, a client. Yeah, exactly. Like, you should. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. you're expecting like you're a better more. experience. You, yeah. you want, you're coming here because a lot of people go to the barbershop. Some men, they come like going to the barbershop because it gets away from everybody. Yes. Yep. They, that's kind of like their free time away from family, having to deal with kids, yep. like, all these other things. They come here to just talk shit with their friends or their barber. They become friends with them and they enjoy it and they're paying, they're, they don't, they'll gladly pay you because. Right. It's not just the haircut. It's yeah. coming here to chill. Yep. Ah, yeah, I feel relaxed in here. Okay, and you you're getting taken care of. Yep. To vent. Yeah. Vent. Yeah. Like, we have one client. Oh, my God. Same conversation every time. Yo, shout out to you, bro. <laughs> you probably know who you are. Yeah, he knows, he's funny, though. He's, yeah, that's I my guy. That's my day. guy. I cut his hair the other day, and I was counting the time down when he sat down. to when he Wait, you stole about, his client? 
No, no, no. no. We that. take care of each other, bro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I was watching the time. Like, all right, he's been in my chair for five minutes, and he ain't said nothing about his girl yet. <laughs> I'm waiting on it. It's coming. But it's funny, bro. And he's so funny about it. He's like, I know, man. I just can't figure it out, dog. I can't. But yeah. he's getting there. He's young, man. They, but but oh, yeah. the com- and that and the what what he said. The only thing I would specify more, which he already did, is just the the way that those questions are asked, right? Because there's so many people who. You be like, oh, what kind of haircut you want? And then, like he said, mid fade or high fade, a little, little bit off the top. Yeah, yeah. And a barber will take that statement and run with it, which mm-hmm, is yeah. fine, I guess, yeah. right? But not me, because I could do that a million different ways. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I need to find out which way you want it to be. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. But like a lot of barbers, I have, I talk a lot, obviously, right? I don't have a problem asking you a million questions. Yeah. yeah. A lot of barbers are not like super, surprisingly not like super outgoing, yeah. right? Like you might have like a more introverted guy or just a more quiet person. Steven, Steven, the quiet dude. You're up, yeah. Like he'll talk, you get in a certain topic, he'll open up, but usually quiet, reserved person. Mm-hmm. So it's like sometimes it's hard for certain people, um, not that I'm referring to him, but that to, to open the conversation up. Like, hey, I know, I know you said this. What is it that you really mean, though? Because a lot of people will say something and be meaning something completely different because they're not barbers. They don't know how they get their hair cut. Yeah. Yeah. So or they don't know what the barber's doing. You know what I mean? You get a lot of people who will come and sit down in your chair, tell you what haircut they want, use the right words, and not realizing they're talking about a totally different haircut. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. Like, oh, okay. And then that's when p- pictures come out. Like, let me just show you. I know yeah, what you're yeah. saying. Let me just show you what it looks like. Yeah. But a lot of barbers don't want to use that extra 10 minutes up yeah. because they're like, oh, damn, I'm, I'm just 8, 10, 15 minutes out the haircut. I was just going to say, too, another aspect of that is that I feel like it depends on the type of person or the personality of, like, what their goal is. Because you guys are envisioning past just cutting hair. You've already been doing that. Yeah, because yeah, right? I, I had a question. Well, and when you're done, I had a question to kind of okay. go along that. And then, like... You're, you're thinking, okay, you know, you want to do events, you want to do an academy, you want to do these things. And that is what is driving you to focus in on those little aspects that other barbers don't because their mentality is, I'm already here. I'm already I'm just cutting the hair. I'm just cutting hair, just trying to get it as quick as possible. And I'm going to go home and do the same thing every day. But you guys are striving for more, elevating, pun intended. Hell yeah. Yep. And that is what drives the continuous improvement is yep. what drives that awareness to actually put yourself in the shoes of the client. Yeah. So <laughs> this is, this is a great, you know, I'm going to kind of just bounce off of that because I, you guys were talking about like the price of the haircut and stuff like that. And then also, also what you're talking about. So I, I was in, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. Cause I just want to be, just want to be like politically correct in the sense. Fuck that. Um, so, okay, so I was at a convention. You can't. I, I'm uh, not. But that right, so I was at a convention. There okay. was a guest speaker, all right, talking. Uh, this person was showing people how to cut hair, uh, how to color hair, all that kind of stuff. And the best way to put it was I, had, I, was, a, I was a guest speaker as well at this barber convention. And so I was asked to go on to the, on to, into the convention to guest speak on social media. And for me, when I'm coming, when I'm coming from a vantage point of social media for any business, now you're a business. And so this is where I do kind of get confused with people in business that don't want to elevate, right? Uh, Definitely using the pun. (laughs) So like, I I do get confused with people in business because when you're jumping into business, it's capitalism. And I know that there's a lot of different ways to go about that. So I'm kind of setting up the stage because I'm going to ask both of y'all a question in regards to elevating, talk about price point, et cetera. So this gentleman was talking about how he does not, his prices will never elevate, but how fast he's able to cut your hair elevates. Hence, he can cut, he can do a fade in 15 minutes and so i remember thinking to myself because i was about to i completely changed my talk and it's funny because i talked to my mom my mom is my best friend she just you know i always thought of my mom so after the fact i told my mom that i changed my complete my complete talk because of this gentleman because i didn't want to disrespect him because he was the main event guy so here's the main event guy pretty much telling people don't charge more just get faster but in my mind, I thought to myself, as an artist, and I not only do I look at barbers as entrepreneurs, but I look at y'all as artists, 
my work elevates, just like Diet Coke, you know what I'm saying, um, Pusha and, and Kanye, yesterday's price is not today's price. So in Sorry. my mind, as a business owner, as an artist that's trying to elevate, my prices is going to elevate. What, you know what I'm saying, they know, you know what I'm saying, like somebody looks at this mural, I know how much it costs, and they'd be like, and I've gotten tons of it, hey, how much did the astronaut cost? I know what it's worth, and I tell them the price. A lot of people get sticker shocked. Then they're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, bet, I appreciate you letting me know. I'll talk to you later. You know, like, yeah. you Keep know, like. Yeah, you ain't got this bag, bro. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> got the bag, you don't got the bag, yeah. and, and that's fine. But I, for me, the reason why I push so heavily on social media is because your personal brand is going to elevate your business, meaning that when you elevate your business, your prices should elevate. Mm -hmm. Everything in your life should elevate. So my question to y'all is, what are your thoughts on that? The topic of raising your price point, I don't, because I mean, you guys both know what your average cut is in regards to timing. Okay, I could do a fade in 30 minutes or by average cut, a client is usually, a client is usually in my chair for an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is. In this gentleman's case, though, he was saying that he does a $25 cut. He can, do a, he can do a really great fade or a really great cut in 15 minutes, and he charges $25 or $30. In my mind, though, if you are a, what I would consider a celebrity barber, you're traveling, your time is worth way more than, what, $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that in regards to... Because even the 40, which I'll tell you right now, I'll pay for a $40 cut. There's a lot of people that will say, whoa, yeah. that's a lot of money. They do, yeah. And But then again, there's also a conversation of not every client's your client. Right. Exactly. So exactly. I just want to open the floor to both y'all as barbers, how you feel about that in regards to as you elevate with your skill, as you elevate with your celebrity, as you elevate on social media, and as you elevate, I'm using that word specifically, elevate, as you elevate with locations, because you guys are going to have elevate barbershops. I'm just speaking this over your life. Yeah. You're going to have elevate barbershops in every major city, mm -hmm. right? Because I see how y'all move. I've only been around y'all for three months, and the professionalism, the professionalism is off the charts. Appreciate you it. guys don't play games. Thank you. And so if you continue on this trajectory, there, there's no other way to go but up, and there's no other way but to have you know, however many chairs you want and then opening up your, your second one by next year. Easy. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on, on elevating your brand and as it speaks to elevating your price point and all that, like all of that? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, pa it's Pandora's box, but let's do it. Because, you know, I could talk forever. I don't yeah. want to you. I feel like you should go. The price, the price depends on a lot of different factors, right? Yeah. The, you, you can perform a service however fast that you want. The years in the game that you have, you could, you could do a fade in 15 minutes, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the service. That's the haircut. It's a whole different other price point, too. Uh, how I base my price off is the market. What is my market around me? Uh, what type of haircut am I given? Like, it, is my shit quality? Is, yeah. is it, does, it, does it match up to other people? And then also, what else am I providing for the customer besides the haircut? Because yeah. you're paying for all that, too. And, and, and that's what separates you from the best. Because you, you go to Gucci, whatever, it's, it's, it's a regular T-shirt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's the quality and it's the experience that you get. You, you, got, a, you got a person that's dedicating yeah. their time to you. You're sitting on leather couches. You're sitting, yeah. your, your quality around you, your quality of life is around you. You're, you're not going to expect a $40 haircut from a, a shithole barbershop. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, the price depends on a lot of stuff. I, and I get what he was saying about quantity, that you want to you wanna be as fast as you can, yes. But you also want to give the best service. It depends on what type yeah. of barber you are. Yeah. Uh, it, you want to be a quantity barber or you want to be a quality barber? Mm. And the qualityness of it is whenever people respect your service more. It's like, oh, I can get a haircut here. Anybody can get a good haircut, like yeah. I said before. It's like, what's the connection that you have with your barber? What's, what's going on in the barbershop around you? Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. else de uh, depends on the price. So yeah. that's, that's hard to say as a barber because as a barber, you depend. You're, you mm. you your price is your price, yeah. and I'm, I'm not going to question it, and it's not up to a consumer to question it. You're wow. you coming to me for a service, and yeah, this yeah. is my price. Yeah. You don't go to anybody else and question their price. True. So don't question mine, you know what I'm saying? But you can question it on coming back. Yeah. You know, true, so that, true, that, true. That's, why, that's why the client retention is everything. What you get whenever you open a door, uh, a greet, 
whenever you get in the chair, yo, what's good, bro? You know, it, it's, it's everything that involves from whenever they get into the door and whenever they leave is how do you feel? Yeah. It, for, for me as a barber, you know, is that, that's the qualityness of that because you, you've gotten bad haircuts before. Everybody yeah. has been a consumer before, so you learn from that. And then you also work with other people that have given bad haircuts or given a bad experience or a bad service, and then you learn from those people. And be like, I'm not trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? So it, everything comes about from it, but it's all um, experience-based. Okay. I, I see. And then your price is your price, man. Yeah. You stand on that. You know, if you want to charge 40, you want to charge 50, that's you. If, if you're not booked up, that's you. That's yeah. your price. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. The people are not respecting that. But you stand on your price. Yeah. And you also then have to wonder why they're not coming. Like, let's say you are charging a certain price and you're not booked up. Why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, is yeah. It, what, what's the missing link? So for me, my answer to that question is pretty almost the same as his, but with minor differences, right? For me, I am not trying to cut you fast at all. Like, yeah, yeah. For one, I don't like to cut fast. Like it's just unless I'm just in the zone and I happen to be moving quickly, which mm-hmm. does happen. Yeah. But uh, but for the most part, I like to take my time and chill. Yeah. Not only for myself as a person doing the labor, to also like take my time, make sure I don't mess up. You know, kind of figure. Just like wa- watching you do the wall is how I look at hair yeah. when I'm do- when I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? And also, I don't want my clients to feel like they got in and out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you come in, I, I want you to feel like it is the experience you were talking about earlier that you just mentioned where, like, I remember grow, growing up, I grew up in pretty much the same barbershop. We all did, right? Hotspot Barbershop, which is now yeah. the Fade Factory in Kissimmee. Shout out. But, uh, Plug. but <laughs> that's like home, hobby. right? Like, I grew up, I, at 13, I started sweeping up hair there. Wow. Then a couple months later, I, I got my first set of clippers, whatever. So that, yeah. that's how I became a barber. But I've also been to other barbershops and then growing up, going to the military, going to different states. I've been to plenty of different places and got my hair cut a lot of different ways. Yeah. And every spot you go to and every barber makes you feel different. You feel mm-hmm. different while you're talking to them, while they're, the way they touch your head. Mm. No homo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love the, it. The way that, uh, the way that, <laughs> The way they, the, the way that, the way that he, his clipper strokes are different than my clipper strokes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And as, as many, minute as that seems, mm-hmm. as a detail, it changes. It does. Because we're all different people. The, the, our sensations of touch is different. You know what I'm saying? What we expect from a person. But also, I want somebody to know when they come sit in my chair that this hour, because I book my appointments for an hour. Yeah. I want you to know that this hour is for you. You wow. feel me? Like, yeah, 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 when yeah. you come in here. I've, I've blocked out this hour and I put everything on pause pretty much mm-hmm. to just focus on our conversation and getting your hair right, wow, whatever, at whatever cost that may be. Because you're paying me – I look at it not as you're paying me for the haircut. You're paying me for my time. Yeah. Like that's how I view it. And, that's and, how, yep. And I want to I, – I use that time however I need. Sometimes that doesn't take me an hour. Yep. But sometimes it, it take me 20 minutes and maybe it will be a real easy cut and I just cut his hair a week ago. But we have like 30 minutes more of great conversation. That, yeah. Or I stop, I stop cutting. Maybe, maybe we get so into the conversation, I just turn the clippers off and I just lean on the station like, yo, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm we saying? We got that time. Because yeah, yeah. we have time. I'm blocked off. You paid for my time. And, I, and I'm interested. If I'm not interested, I'm not going to have that kind of conversation. I, I was going to say also that's another value that you guys may have for the clients, is, which is the fact that obviously your whole theme is elevating your life in general. Yes. Whatever it is that you are, you're elevating your craft or your service or whatever your dreams are, visions is. And when you come in here, I can see that like the vibe is when you come here, you get inspired to live life and elevate your life in some way. Whatever way you're trying to do it, yeah. you come in here and get inspired to do that. That's exactly it. Yeah. And that's the theme that I see of people coming here, yeah, yeah. where they see, you know, we're doing a, we're going to be doing the podcast in here. You're going to be doing events or whatever. You're going to be do, teaching people stuff. But the main thing is whatever it's inspiration yeah. for people to do whatever they're trying to do and do it the best that they can, because that is what's beautiful in life. When you do, when you dive that deep into something mm-hmm. and you put your all into it, those are the only moments that you remember. Yeah. And those are the things that you revert back to when you're on your deathbed yep. and you remember, Hey, I'm so glad that I put my all into this mural. I put my all into the barbershop. Yeah. I put my all yeah, into yeah. filming. Like I, that's what makes it a great experience because that bond that we created doing this, we were all so involved in what we were doing 
that that's what the, created the bond. That the we energy. Had. And then yes. now it's like it's yes. like residual. It's like that energy is painted into the walls in here. You know, like, yeah. liter- like literally, literally the and, elevate energy. And <laughs> and that's that's what elevate I elevate energy drink. <laughs> hey, stop it. The elevate that's all fruits going to be fruits, crazy yeah. on this. Episode. If you guys had a blender with like made fruits like a fruit bar for people. We're gonna have to get an elevate counter on this on this episode. The count yeah. how many times you say elevate. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but but that's what goes into my idea of pricing. The other thing I, that you almost mentioned, you kind of mentioned, is I don't want to be accessible to anyone. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my my personal thing. Like he may feel differently. Other barbers may, but I've already had enough enough experience with my own clients and other people who have tried me out where. Somebody might be a cool person, but it's not the person I want to cut their hair, yeah. you know? And when it comes to the price itself, like just as a number tag, shock, shock value, sticker value, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. I, want, I want that to automatically weed out a lot of people. And it will. You know which what I'm is, saying? And my art does too, which is fine. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, it's not for you. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's fine. It's just because even though you – just because you – even people who can't afford to cut. Let's say people who do have money, right? Yeah, yeah. There are people who have money, good money. But aren't the people that I want to be cutting their hair? True. You know, it's like mm-hmm. we're not the vibe. Your energy is different. You're a cool yeah. person. I wish you the best. But like, we don't. Um, we're, I'm not helping you, and you're not helping me. Different barbers for different people. Yeah, exactly. it's, you know yes, what I mean. Yes. Like, what you're the kind of relationship you're looking for with a barber is not the kind that I'm looking for with yeah, the client. It goes both ways. Yes. People think it's just about the client, where it's like, no, it's also about what I want to do. Yeah, this is yeah. my business. Exactly. Yeah. It's like yeah. if I'm going to cut your hair, it has to be an enjoyable experience for me. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. I do it for the for money because I have to make a living. But I do this job because I enjoy it. I'm not trying to do it in a way that I don't enjoy. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? So if you come in here and you give me too many problems or sometimes people need help. You know, sometimes I'm not saying yeah. like I won't sit there and work through issues with people. But after a certain point, for example, there's one client in particular who came to me before. He has these issues with his hair. Yeah. So we sat down. I cut his hair about two times, maybe three. But he came to me the first time. We talked about his issues. I, I helped him out. And I was like, okay, this is where this is the path that we're going down because we these are the issues you're having. This is how we fix them. Yep. It's gonna take a little time, but this is the journey. Then I see like they've gone out to a bunch of different barbers. I don't care that they go to different barbers, right? But if you're coming to me and I'm putting my time and energy to try to help you with an issue and I'm telling you how to fix it, and then you just go and throw all that out the window because yeah. you gotta get a haircut with somebody else, that's fine. But then when you come back and sit in my chair, don't restart the process with me i'm not going to sit here and go back over everything we just talked about and start over just because you wanted to go get your haircut with somebody else can i do it yes but that's not what i'm here for like i want to do to take care of people that are uh valuing what i'm offering and valuing the work that i'm putting in if i'm going because it's going to spend this hour putting all this energy into this and you're going to go just fuck it off and then want to come back and start all over, then it's like, I'm not building anything with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to establish something. So it's not that you're going to other people. It's that you're going to other people but complaining about the same problem. Because if you go to different barbers, like he said, every barber has a different touch. It's not that they did bad haircuts. Other barbers do great haircuts, but they're different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the growth pattern, what you're going to get out of it down the line is going to be different. So, and moral of the story is that client can't come to me anymore because yeah. – for me personally, I don't want to put my energy into that. Cool dude. I like the dude. He's cool, but I'm not trying to cut It's like it. dealing with somebody who you keep telling them this is what you need to do and they keep ignoring it. Yeah. And you just like, I, I can't help you anymore. And at that point, you kind of don't even want to like be around them because they're not here like trying to progress. Yeah. They're stagnant in what they're doing where it's like, okay, like you're you're not – the vibe that I want. When yeah. someone who's trying to elevate vibe. Exactly. You're not trying. It's like, yeah, you're not you even. You don't care about your fucking You're cut. complacent with what you're, what you're doing, but mm-hmm. you're complaining about it. Yeah. And you're getting the tools to do something about it, but you're not doing nothing about yeah. it. So now at that point, it's like, okay, now you're just draining my energy. Yeah. Because it's one thing. You always got to give a give and take, no matter what it is, right? Uh, you, we all have people in our lives that we pour more into than they give to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, also, we are also those people to other people. True. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's fine for that. For that to, it's not always going to be perfectly level. And that's good for everybody. But then, like you said, it gets to the point where you're just drained out. It's like, oh, this, this relationship is not useful. I wanted to ask 
so how do you guys feel? Well, you haven't really cut in here yet, have you? I cut one. Okay. Yeah. So how do you guys feel? Like, do you guys feel any different cutting in the barbershop now that you own the place versus cutting in someone that someone else owns? And like, how does that feel? For yeah. you? It, it's a different feeling because it's, it's yours. But I feel like if you're in somebody else's shop, you got to feel as comfortable as it was your shop. You got to take mm-hmm. care of that shop like it would be your mm-hmm. shop. You know, you got to be as professional as that. Then whenever you do get your own shop, it's nothing new. Right. I've been doing this. I've been taking yeah. care of my business. You know what I'm saying? But it's a fucking whole vibe. <laughs> yeah. Bro, it's different. It's different because you yeah. got you got you you created something that you wanted and this is yeah. this is it. You know, this is your vibe. This is this is everything that you decided upon is here and you executed it. And it's like once you start mm-hmm. cutting, it's like it's that realization like, bro, yeah, we're here. Would yeah. you say would you say that it has exceeded your expectation or, or is it like right on par with it or even if it's lower than what you were expecting? No, it's it's exceeded. Wow. The 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 vision from the vision from whenever we first started. Yeah. Yo, it's yeah. gone it's Elevated. gone crazy. <laughs> no, it's it's gone crazy because every every single piece that we've added, mm-hmm. EJ, you, then we all bring bring everything together and then it's like we're bringing these ideas and it's like, "Oh shit, that is a good idea." Yeah. Oh, yeah. let's 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 take that part and let's 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 do that, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's exceeded the expectations from the beginning. From yeah, the very yeah. beginning it was like, "Okay, well, we're making a barbershop. We're yeah, going to open yeah. a barbershop." Now it's like, "All right, we go we go and fucking take those steps and we created this, you know, mm-hmm. we created this. Before Philby goes, I wanted to ask you, how did you feel about when Philby brought up making a documentary about the experience? No, <laughs> me, I'm like, I'm like, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I'm going with any idea possible. You know, it was, yeah. it was a crazy idea. It was like, shit, we can make it work. Yeah. Like every idea yeah. that we came up with in here has not been far reached. You know, uh, it's something that we can actually grab and take a hold of and actually execute yeah, it's yeah. nothing that couldn't be done and that's you got to be realistic in business as well because it's like sometimes something is not as realistic but everything that we came up with or you guys came up with bro it was it was doable and it is doable yeah. and it's like if we can do it then why not yeah. Let, let's 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 take that idea let's do it because i'm we're always open to new ideas that's how you grow yeah. and that's how you grow as a business and as a person and yo, it was crazy. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, to be honest, when I first, I don't remember where you. If I offered it to you, you told me to do a documentary. I told you. So you were telling like, yo, why don't you guys do a documentary? But we were thinking something more short. Yeah. But yeah. then when I actually got here and after day one, I was like, no, this is a movie. Yeah. Yeah. This is gonna yeah. be a movie. And now we're doing like, it in a movie theater. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that. That part is like the top, the creme de yeah. la creme. And yeah. I remember and that was like, a brainstorm. Exactly. Yeah, it was. I mean, I remember when we first talked about because originally we weren't gonna, we were supposed to buy another barbershop. Yeah. In mm-hmm. in downtown, that just timing didn't work on that. It wasn't looking good. And like he said earlier, the first thing we kept saying to each other the whole time was like, it doesn't matter if this goes through or not. We're opening a barbershop. Wow. Like it doesn't matter if this is the one. we we have to do it because at this point we had we had been to a few shops around town. We went to we were, had been at the one shop that was like. The best aesthetic shop in town. Like, no shop looks better than that one. You know yeah. what I mean? Hands down. And after that, it was like, we, we, anywhere it would be a downgrade, visually. You know what I mean? And, in, and then with visuals, we do all our um, social media posts and things like that. So the visuals had to be there. And it also changes the vibe. Yeah. So we knew that we had to do that. And the whole time, it was like, it do, whatever it takes, it doesn't matter. We're going to do it. We have to do it. And then that's what it, that's what it had to come down to. And... Um, for me, what was the question that you were just answering from uh, you? The difference between owning the barbershop. Oh and yeah. Cutting. So yeah. then, then for me, once once it was all established, and I started cutting in here, it just kind of felt I was in here by myself. So it, it, the energy wasn't the same in the first day, and I'm and I'm also like, kind of like, oh man, I got a lot of shit to do. I, was, I had yeah. like nine haircuts. I was fully wow. booked, and I wasn't sure how the AC was gonna hold up because we, we you know we just got in here. I was like, damn, I hope today goes okay. But by the end of the day, I looked at my watch. I was like, damn, I just did nine haircuts. Like, and it just went by like nothing. Wow. And like he said, I never felt uncomfortable at any of the shops I was at. I always felt at home. I felt like it was my – I did treat it like my barbershop because you to. have to, right? Yeah. To. And, but being in here, knowing it actually was, it, was, it actually feels like I'm home. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, and I don't mean that in a, a symbolic way. Like, it feels like I'm home. Like, this is just an extension. I think of you my told house. me one time that felt like you were like cutting up your boys in your in, garage or at your house. Yeah, because yeah. that's how I kind started like, was yeah. cutting up in the garage at the house. So having my the people come in that I've been cutting, and then have them come like and then see their reaction when they come in and see the thing, and they're like, "Yo, this is dope!" And it's like sharing that. And you were talking about the inspiration, and I have had so many people, you know. I'm glad when people do give flowers and, you know, it feels good when they give a compliment or whatever. But you also don't want to get, like, crazy. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And, like, you also – when so many people give you compliments <laughs> at the same time, you kind of like, oh, shit, am I taking it well? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. get blown up or nothing, but it's, like, mad people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they'll come in like, yo, this is awesome. It's so inspiring. But, but genuinely, so many people have sat down in the chair and told me, like, one-on-one with nobody in here, like, yo, what you guys have done is really inspiring, like, has really motivated me. And these are clients who – have been with us, and I say with us because we went to the, our first barber shop together in Ocala. We were working in there, mm-hmm. so they saw us working in the first shop, wow. which was oh, like you guys worked at the first, very first shop you were at yeah. together. Shop, yeah. oh, okay. So it was like barber school, then that, wow. and it, that first shop we was at was a hood shop, and it was a small shop, and we had a lot of fun there. It was yep. tiny, like you turn two chairs to, at the same time, you're hitting, <laughs> oh wow, you're hitting feet. Like it was a yeah. small shop, and uh, and we had and we had they had a lot of people come through. We cut them all up. But we have a lot of clients still for to this day that came to us there who have seen the four different shops that we've wow. been at. So they've kind of seen the, the elevation. Yeah. You know yeah, what I bro. mean? And then they come in here and they're like, damn, bro. And a couple of them a few months back were asking like, you know, do you ever plan on doing your own thing? Da, da, da. And then you just see us, boom, like on the money, one, two months, like we're getting it done. And then it's cool to hear it because you kind of get lost in the sauce while you're doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's like, I'm so busy. Now I got, okay, I'm doing it. But now I got to do this. got to do this. We got to do this. We got to get this done. And then to be able to finally sit and hear them be like, yo, I, I'm, not, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not being a barber. But watching you come through these steps and establish something is motivating for them. And that's cool. You know what I mean? Because that's exactly what I want people to feel when they come in. Yeah. You feel me? So like to, to have them actually watch the whole process. And, you know, if you watch my – if you look at my Instagram, the first few haircuts down in there are in my living room. You know what I'm wow. saying? So it's like you see the mm-hmm. whole step of the process, and it, it's not crazy long. And then that's, that's another thing. They're like, damn, I remember it was like two years ago. Now you got your own place. And it's like, bro, this ain't the end. You know? And, right. it, and it's like I want people to take that energy and apply it to themselves, not just watch it. You know what I mean? I don't just want you to watch it. I want you to do something about it for yourself. Yeah. I, I wanted to actually switch topics because I keep seeing this beautiful mur- mural. I got a piece. So I'll be right like, I wanted to ask how before asking them. Because yeah. I want to get your take first on how, how how do you feel about your finished product on the mural? Like, what are your thoughts on it from the beginning before starting it? And then at the end, when you actually completed it, like, what did you feel about the actual mur- mural? So this one was was interesting because up to this point, I have not done like a humanoid if you will, mm. you know, like a human, quote unquote. Okay. And I know that technically you can't see the astronaut's face. So technically it could be a man, it could be a woman, whatever. But excuse me, in regards to like arms, hands, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you could tell that's a human, you know, like, and um, I was nervous going into it because I knew, like I knew that this was going to be the first one when they said space theme, and I and I say this I say this respectfully and you know because I know every art is art and I never want to disrespect. But for the most part now, so many people do like the space, like the street side planet stuff, and you see it on social media all the time. That it's kind of like anybody can do it. You know, you see that kind of stuff, and you know, I personally know you know um, second graders, third graders that that do it like they. They grab the bowls and they grab the spray paint and the parents get them the poster board and, you know, the newspaper. And they're able to do the, the mountainous, you know, mm-hmm. spacing, you know, that you see on YouTube. And mm-hmm. all, those type of videos, that they go viral all the time. And so, so many people, they know that. So, when initially um, Philby came up to me or, you know, hit me up, it was like, hey, I, I want you to do a space theme. I, I knew for a fact that I, I just didn't want it to be that. I, I didn't want it to be what you normally see and what you mm-hmm. normally see are the spray painted yeah what you normally see 
you know, what you normally see is the, the planets with, you know, the splatter and stuff, and you see that. So mm-hmm. I knew that that was going to be an element. So automatically, I was like, man, I, I need it to be something different. And I started to kind of, everything that was space themed, you know, is it going to be like a space center? Is it going to be like a shuttle taking off? Is it going to be, you know, what is it going to be? And so when I when I thought about an astronaut, I automatically got nervous because I knew this is going to be the first like human mm. that I do. So it, it was it's a milestone. And what's really cool about this, and I'm just kind of taking my time talking about it. What's really cool about this is you know this whole process. It, it wasn't supposed to look like this. Like how it looks, it it wasn't. It, it wasn't the vibe. It wasn't you know like what I was thinking in the very very beginning it was going to be very loose it it was going to be very the space was going to take over way more than anything else because i I remember him saying philby was like hey we want a space theme more galaxy (laughs) more (laughs) galaxy (laughs) so um you know ultimately when i made when i started painting the astronaut i knew i wanted it to be big you know bold but ultimately at the very end of it, it it just we, I talked about it a lot earlier in the podcast, but it was the creation of a style that this, this by far, in regards to, like, the future of my work, this is my favorite piece. Ooh. This is the catalyst. It's the inception. It's, it's a big deal. Like, I was talking to them, and, you know, it's like I never want to impose or anything like that, but I was like, bro, if there's any way that you're able to, to catalog it in, in your website and you know, add it to the website, a little story about it, a picture of it, because in Ness history, so my name's Ness, no, I have seen, you know, that's my artist name In Ness history. This, this is a monumental moment in Ness history because now many of the murals that you'll see will be derived from shock style. Hmm. And so like, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see that I have about six or seven styles but I never was able to figure out my mural style because everything that I work on is on canvas. And a lot of my styles have to do with laying a canvas down flat and being able to aggressively attack the canvas as it's flat, not on the like flat on the floor as opposed to flat on the wall. Hmm. So when you think about everything that I've done with stenciling, when you, I have a style called strike style, which is my abstract work. So I like fill, I feel like uh, solo cups with paint and just like, bowling ball like paint on the canvas and it's just like this very aggressive Mm. flow that i have but everything has to do with the paint hitting the ground as opposed to the wall and even with my drips i control my drip style because when i'm on canvas the drip will start vertical but i'll lay the canvas down when i want it to stop so i'm always in control but with this I've been having such a hard time. And at this point now, I have almost 20 murals. And a majority of them are in wow. Central Florida. But if you look, if you go on Nest Murals right now, like Nest Murals Instagram, or if you go to like my Facebook and you look at all of my murals, they all look different. You yep. know, they all have a different, like what I did at Bellevue. I have six murals yep. at Bellevue. Every single one of those murals look different. There's no style, quote unquote, to them. Because in my heart of hearts, I hadn't, I hadn't figured it out yet. Yeah. I figured it out now. Ooh. That's crazy. I, I, I love the theme of like all of us elevated, I feel like, from this. Yes. You know, yeah. from, your, <laughs> from your thing. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yes. The, the theme is crazy. The, but absolutely. I wanted you to, I didn't catch exactly. What does NES stand for? Yeah. So NES stands for no eye has seen. It's based off mm. of 1 Corinthians 2 9 in the Bible. And it says, for no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those that love him. Hmm. Bar. And so that's um, it's a cornerstone of, of what I do. You know, what I'm saying like I never you know, I never want to preach or, or force mm-hmm. anybody into what I believe in. You know, what I'm saying I'm yeah. a believer in Christ and I read the Bible and I just just to kind of share real quick. I had a, an artist block uh, in my mid 20s. I didn't create for like almost a year and a half, two years. Anything that I did was uninspired. It just it was literally a block. And. It was all about my last name. You know, traditionally people sign their artwork with their name or their surname, you know, or the, like their, their pseudo name or their tag, you know. But for me, I was so obsessed with myself, like Nieves, my last name. I mean, I had a clothing line in college. 
I would sell T-shirts out the trunk of my car, and I would sell out, order more sell out, and because I wanted people to have my name across their chest, I was just so obsessed with that. And I do believe, you know, in my life, you know, God speaks to everybody differently, and He talks to you, and and I don't, you know, God doesn't punish, so I'm not. I'll never say He punished me, but definitely, you know, I do see God as a father. And as a dad, I, I can't speak to fatherhood yet. That's why, like, when I see, you know, people that are father, guys that are fathers, I'm always like, man, I wish I knew how it felt like to be a father because it's like you love this child so much, but they're acting bad. So, like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. to, because you know you want them to be the best human that they can be, but they wilding out or they're trying to run across the street, you know, and play in traffic, and you know if they're going to get hurt. So I always, I look at God like a father. And so I feel like for that, for those couple of years, like he sat me down and was like, yo, like you wildin', bro. You know, like you, you, you're real selfish right now. And I love you, uh, but I want to give you more, but I can't work with you like this because you're so selfish, but I love you so much. And so he kind of like, he kind of turned the faucet off for a little bit so that I can just kind of be with, within myself and be with him for a while. And then during a quiet time, bro, I'm telling you, like, everything, I couldn't, I couldn't paint, I couldn't draw. And I was creating like crazy for the longest time. And this was, like I said, so in my mid-20s, late, near my late 20s, I read, the, I read, I was in a quiet time, I read that scripture and just no eye has seen, just like, it was like hovering over the page, like over the Bible. And so no eye, no eye has seen, Ness, Ness was born. Wow. And so I started signing all my work, you know, literally from that moment, um, I tried painting again and things started clicking and then I started signing Ness. And at that moment, that's when, bro, like I would sell out all my paintings. Like I couldn't keep stuff on the website. It was crazy. And that's, crazy. that's when everything took off. And, you know, my followers, I went from like 700 followers to 10,000 followers in like a couple months time. Everything just kind of took off from there, you know. Elevated is a yeah. theme. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, so that's what Ness, you know, Ness yeah. is all about. And you fast forward to now, and I've been praying, like, because, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all the work that I do with my mural stuff. But the thing is, I don't envy. I, I, I try my best. I mean, I'm human. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, yeah. But like, I definitely do my best to not envy people anymore. I'm not an envious person. But I do see some artists that, like, are established and they have a style, if you will. You know, they'll do, like, the, the art Basels and they'll be, like, in the Winwood Walls. And they have these – people are known for a style. Yeah. And I've always been like, man, it'd be dope if, if I could be known for a style. I don't, I don't care about my name, but just a style that maybe people can be inspired by and they can try shock style. Like, yo, I'm a, I'm, I heard about this shock style. Like, I'm going to try it out. So then when I did this and – again with the creative freedom and that's the beauty of freedom right like the beauty of creative freedom and having friends clients that are like hey you know we seen what you did you know we the only parameters really that we're going to give you is space themed you know what i'm saying yeah. we we went back and forth and teeter-tottered on color but in the grand scheme of things they never wavered off of the theme that they gave me to begin with which was space so like i was always I was always allowed to be in like a meta form, like in the meta, which is where I work the best, yeah. like in the macro as opposed to the micro. So I don't know, man. It's a big deal. This mural is a big deal in my life. I mean, I know it is for them, but just I want to say thank you all again. I'll, I'll, I'll probably never stop saying thank you because a style was born in this room. That's fire. Dude. That's oh, gonna, yeah. It's yeah. like it'll be, I believe in it so much. It'll be known globally. You know, yeah. shock style will be known globally. Mm -hmm. And as much as my platform can bless all y'all's platform, I'm here for it. Yeah, vice versa, bro. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm, I'm glad that, that, like you said, I, it's so <laughs> it's so hype for me yeah, yeah. hearing it over and over. Because it's like, yo, everything we wanted this place to be, it it's is, becoming. It and it up. is. Exactly. And and then even for you, when you were talking about, like, the, the sharp edges and the yeah. lines and we were comparing them to haircuts and how yeah. relevant that is and the angles and it's. It's fire, dude. I actually, uh, before I get your, your guys' opinion on the murals, I actually, when you were giving me the story behind Ness, yeah. I was thinking about how, how everybody ha tries to create a certain brand and their story behind it is so interesting and it's all more um, custom to that person's personality and vision. Because I've created from the four that I'm trying to create, yeah. I have a story behind why I'm doing it too, and and a and a 
brand culture that I'm trying to create behind all of it and everyone's story and having that story is important as opposed to some people might make a, a logo or a business and they don't care at all about the meaning. Yeah. yeah. But the meaning behind the logo or what you're trying to do in the culture of what you're doing in your business or your craft is the driving force. Wow. Like that is what creates it. And if you don't have that, you're not you're going to reach a plateau mm-hmm. in my opinion wow. in your business because you don't have that meaning behind it. That means that you didn't put enough oomph or heart into that pa- passion or purpose it behind it. Yeah. To to make that name something because it's you can think of like something like Nike. Like what the hell is Nike mean? But it's because of the force that was behind it that what they marketed, what they created behind it, that gives it the power. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have something meaningful behind mm-hmm. it, it's yeah. only going to reach so far. Yeah. And if anything, you might have to reestablish yep. a whole other business re-brand. or a new brand. Exactly. But if it has powerful meaning behind it, you don't need to rebrand because it's already you've already thought that deep or put yeah. that much passion behind it. Yeah. And then now we're – when people think of Elevate, they're going to think of Nez murals. Yeah. And then when they have like, when you do art pieces for here that are going to be on sale, yeah. it's going to be like, oh, they do, they, they sell the art over there. And, and oh, you know, mm-hmm. official Nez, oh, he's the one who did that barbershop. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, the yeah. connection to it all too. And I was going to ask you how you felt about the documentary getting filmed. Like, was that weird for you originally or yeah, what? Yeah, no. So I'm going to be real. It wasn't weird at all because I actually, I want that, bro. Like, I tell people, like, I, I want the Truman Show. Hell like, yeah. put cameras on me all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you guys talking about, like, being followed, you know, followed. But, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Having a camera on you. I'm in the bushes. Well, you were followed yeah. by management. Yeah. But, you know, being be, having your life documented, professionally yeah. documented, that's actually goals for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love that. And I know to a certain degree, like, when you have family, that changes. And I always want to protect my family and stuff like that. So, as again as i elevate i love i love that i love that word it is my word of the year and i love that this barbershop's named that but as i elevate in my career and i can obtain and hire a full-time you know documenteer if you will i don't know documentarian documentarian there it is um that's the kind of life i want and i was inspired by gary v gary vanderchuk long time ago right you know Back when he, man, my goodness, like 10 years ago when he came out with like one of his first videos, like F Monday, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He was like, bro, he was like on the street side and telling people like, bro, F Monday, bro, like just do it. Wake up and and why why are you upset at Monday? If you're upset at Monday, that's your fault. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't your job's fault. Quit your job. Like I had never heard anybody be like, quit your job. Like before Gary Vee. That's hilarious. Yeah. I've never heard. <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. Uh, I, go ahead. What are you no, going to I was just going to say because so many That's people. That's like my catchphrase. So many all, people have that mentality. Yeah. And we talk about that all the time <laughs> to the point where we were working at a job together, a corporate uh, job at Chewy. Yeah. And we were both on the recruiting team over there. Wow. And <laughs> it got to the point where we were so fed up that we were like, yeah, we're quitting. Like, yeah. We just quit that day. And we went on wow. a cruise like two days later. Oh, my God. And the cruise was like <laughs> celebrating us quitting. The, the funniest wow. thing is we're telling everyone on the cruise, yeah, we're here because we quit our job or we lost our jobs. And we just Which quit is it. like counter. Yeah. yeah. It's like I don't even, it's like countercultural yeah, like, yeah. because people would, do, people would be like, oh, I got a job. So, you know, I'm going to yeah, go on a yeah. cruise or, or I'm on vacation from a job. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go on a cruise. But like real talk, like here I am, what, 20, I don't know, late 20s. All my life, I've always been, you know, I've always heard like, yeah, you, you're going to work. You're going to work until you die. You're going to get a retirement and a 401k, and, and which is great. You could have all that as an entrepreneur still, still. But mm-hmm. it's like I never, nobody, nobody, I had never heard somebody say, if you don't like your job, quit. Quit. Yeah. It was always like this, like, no, that's my job. Like, I got to have something else lined up or I got to figure out my life or it got to be this this long math equation yeah. to like quit my job. It's like, no, quit your job. Yeah. Bro, and there's so many people who are <laughs> miserable yes. doing yeah. what they're doing. And you can see it in their eyes. Like when you go to check out somewhere, yep. you can see the person who enjoys their day and the person who is just like, I, I hate, hate this shit. <laughs> and I, you, I look at them. <laughs> Like, and what are you like, doing? Yeah, because the, the question is always like, why are you here? Like, yeah, yeah. Why, if you hate it, why, why bring here? yourself here? You, you know, know what what's funny, too, on the cruise is when we told people, they were like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I was like, no, that's the reason why we're on the cruise. <laughs> we're celebrating. Because we're celebrating. They're like, what? Like, they're kind of confused because it's like they're trying to wrap their 
your head around the idea. Like a yeah. negative connotation and, towards yeah. it. Like, we losing your job. Like, we got freedom. Yeah. What do you mean? This is the best thing ever. It was fun. Like, That's cool. <laughs> But, but but yeah. a lot of people have that dude and I and I think that all I, I tell that to my clients the ones who who are in similar situations yeah. and it's like yeah. you don't have to do that you wow. don't have to do anything yeah. you don't want to do you now is it am I telling you it's going to be an easy quick yeah, solution exactly. yeah. to finding what you want to do definitely not nope. yeah. but I would rather do that than just wake yeah. up and because I've been I've had a job that I wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. and been like fuck Yo. like this yeah. sucks <laughs> I do not want to do the next 12 hours yes. at all. Like, I just don't even want to get up. And at that point, I was drinking a lot too, yeah. right? And it was like, I, I guess was un, 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 uh, unintentionally what I was doing to cope with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, coping with hating every day that I wake up. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't depressed. I didn't hate my life. I just hated what I had to do every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, it got to, that's what my driving force for everything now is like, I just never want to feel like that again. That it is. So, there it is. Anything that I do is because I want to do it. Like yes. I may be a little, a little less excited about some tasks than others, but if it's, it's usually anything that I'm doing. Let's say I have – even mowing the lawn, right? I don't enjoy necessarily mowing the lawn. Yeah. There are aspects I might. But I know that if I want to take care of my home, yeah. then I have to mow the lawn. Right. So in essence, I – want to mow the lawn so hold you know on so saying? what aspects of mowing the lawn do you like like cranking like do you like cranking like, the mower like <laughs> i like like I what just, aspects that's why I started I, laughing. I, yeah <laughs> i thought the same thing you did like wait what aspects i'm so con- i'm so confused i like <laughs> when i'm done for one okay and i like i like the satisfaction the, like, of that the satisfaction. i kind of like walking my lawn and sweating heavily me too like i do like that like because you're just you're exploring your lawn <laughs> in a way that you normally don't. Gonzo's like, fuck that. Yeah, he's like, I'll I pay, pay somebody. somebody. I'll pay somebody. Yeah, I'll pay somebody. Now you got somebody. Yeah, like, nah, yeah you want to come through? Yeah, pay him. It's 45. Like, you don't usually <laughs> take the time to walk over every square foot of your lawn. Yeah. Right? So when you're mowing the lawn, you're doing yeah. that. Yeah. And, Gonzo's like, nah, uh, not for me. <laughs> Do not recommend. Out. You know, and then, uh, and then you get ghetto. all that dirt and grass mm. on you, especially if you're doing it like no That's shirt funny. and all that. Yeah, yeah. And you just feel grimy and like you worked really hard. And then you go in the shower and you can feel all the dirt coming off. You feel like a man. Yeah, yeah bro. You feel like you're in an Irish exactly. Spring commercial. Exactly, bro. So those are the aspects I like. But but the core I'll of what I you. mean is, is yeah. that even if it's a task, and I, I people have a hard time making this connection, I feel like, in their head. But it's like, even if you don't feel like going to do that task, yeah. what is the reason you're going to do that? Because if the reason you're going to do that is something you want, then you do want to do this. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you have to, That goes with enjoying the journey of the goals. Yes. Right. And you have to enjoy that process of the journey because that is where the value is at. And mm-hmm. until you switch your mindset from goal-oriented to journey enjoyment to reach a certain goal, which is goal is just the direction mm-hmm. that you're going, yeah. which can change at all times throughout that journey. Mm-hmm. But the focus is the journey. And once you're enjoying that, You've got life. Yeah. Like this is life. Those you're goals in reality. will come. You'll, yeah, you'll exactly. complete those goals yeah. as you go you're, along. You're those goals will be in nothing. Reality. But I want to also clarify about the job thing. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. We're not really saying you know just fucking quit your yeah, job no, no, whenever no. you want. It's more like okay, you, you get to because you're always going to be working. Yeah. Doing work, but it's just are you going to transition to doing things that you like to do, the things you is, is aspire to do out of work. And make that into something that can be your your actual income earner or whatever. Once you get to that point, then, or what you have to do to transition to that point, is what you you need to strive to be like. Yeah. And and get. But it's also a lot of people get trapped in a job because they aren't open mentally to other things. So, yeah. like I would say, I can only speak about us two, which is like we are very open to being able to do literally any job. Like, I can go on Indeed and be like, bro, I could do all these jobs right now if I wanted to and get them and do them good. Yeah. yeah. Other people are like, no, I'm not going to do this job. And they're literally like only one or two jobs out of the whole list that they're like, okay, let me just do that. <laughs> that's and, hilarious. And that's why they get stuck because yeah. they're not willing to expand their mind to be like, yeah. let me just do this and I can do anything. Because in, in our minds, I know that me and him are like, we could do anything that we want with this life. It's do I actually want to do it? Yeah. And, and then, do I want to put the energy and time into that's it? That's funny about the Indeed thing because I, I, th- for us, I know one of the most exciting parts of not having a job is finding one. Because <laughs> it is actually pretty <laughs> exhilarating. It's like that's sure. the hype part. We're like, yo, 
I'm about to get a job doing this. <laughs> oh, yo, I just found an opening for this. And they're all completely, it goes from like roofing to recruiter <laughs> to like this. And you're like, bro, wait, what are you doing? Dog I'm like, rumor. I don't know, but this job, the description is hype. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, then at the, and, then, and then you're also, for me at least, I, will, I also look at it like, I don't know what goes on here. Like, how do, what do they do for this? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to go find out. Yeah. Like, how else are you going to find out unless you work there? And to be <laughs> honest, a lot of the jobs, I've had probably over 15 jobs. Yeah, and a too. lot of those jobs have given me the foundational understanding on how to run a business. Yeah. Yes. Because I see all their flaws and errors that they do when running theirs. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I would, run, I would change it like this. And if I was CEO, I'd do this. And that's how I approach every job when I'm looking at it. And then I take that experience and apply it to what I'm trying to create. And then cross-analyzing them, too, because you start yeah. to see from all these different industries you worked in, what's, what's alike, how they cross over yeah. into each other, how they work together. And then you can apply that to things like what we're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like – and then also to, t- to piggyback on what you guys were saying also is so many people, especially if you're doing something you don't really like or you're not really into – you end up going home or getting out of that job and you have to kind of um, go into a different world. You know what I mean? Like usually like for a lot of guys, it's video games mm-hmm. or uh, art, painting, a hobby, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, I'm done with work for the day. Now let me spend the next six hours just doing the one thing I really want to do to distract from the fact that I have to do this again tomorrow. Yes. Instead of using that time to now establish the skills and tools and the platform to do what you really want to do. Yeah. So it's like instead of, for example, let's say, let's say for, for you, right? Because he has a full-time whole other job, like in a whole other industry, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when he's not doing that job, he's cutting hair. He's established, he's spent the last few years going at night school, going to barber school, like not getting home, getting home and then just fucking off. Wow. You know what I mean? Because wow. I'm not saying that in the light of like, don't enjoy your time. Don't have hobbies. But if your life is not going the way you want it to go and you're not taking the time to redirect it, then nothing's going to change. You're going to keep hating it. You're going to keep being miserable and you're going to keep trying to escape shit yep. instead of establishing a life you don't have to escape from. Like for me, I heard that somewhere about vacation, right? Because I love vacations. I always will. <laughs> but I, I, I hate the feeling when you're done with the vacation when you think like, damn, back to reality. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back to doing back to doing the shit I hate. It's really what you're telling yourself, yep. right? Back to doing all the shit I hate. When I understand the the concept that I told you I heard, where it was like, build a life you don't need a vacation from. Mm, I like that. And it makes so much sense to me because will you ever not need a vacation? No. But you, I wanna finish my vacation and just be like, all right, back get back, it. back to it. Yeah. Whatever I'm doing, whatever. Back to it. Not fuck man like i can't believe it's over this wasn't a long enough trip like i have to start doing all this shit now and to me that's that's what i've been doing for the past five six years is like slowly but surely putting all the pieces in place to make that happen and people don't they don't take that into consideration so they just find those escapes and that's all they have and it's like bro you have to slowly take the steps you need to be able to then wake up and quit your job Yes. You know, you have to start establishing the foundational aspects to be like, all right, I don't have to do this anymore. Yep. Or I can slowly back off of doing it. Yep. Next thing you know, I, I wake up on a work day and I'm, I'm not like, hell yeah, let's go cut some hair. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like overly excited, but I'm also super chill. Like, I'm, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like, the, yeah, you don't hate I it. don't hate what I'm doing. I don't mind at all that I'm going there. And I'm actually looking forward. You know, let's say I have nine appointments. Usually, I'm actually excited to see like at least six or seven of those people. Yeah. Maybe one person's a new client. Maybe one is like somebody who maybe doesn't talk much, but they're cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at least six of those people, I'm looking forward to seeing what exciting updates they have to give me and also sharing with them what I have going on. Because yeah. a running joke for me, like we all know I have like a million hobbies, right? And <laughs> one of the things that, that's hilarious to me is when I t- talk to my clients and they're like, What's new? Like, I know you have something to show me today. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if for me, you know, you end up telling, saying a lot of the same stuff as a barber for like, like 10 people a day. Like, it's like you told this person all your updates and all your new yeah. stuff. Then yeah. next person comes in and they're like, so what's, what's new? new? <laughs> and it's like, well, I just went over that with him. But now I'm sharing it with a new person. So, you, you know, we're hearing the same story from each other 10 times that day. 
But to that person, it's a brand new story. So for me, it's easy to bring the excitement out because yeah. they haven't heard it yet. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. So sharing that is exciting for me and knowing that I'm, you know, I know that even if maybe I'm kind of sleepy today or maybe I don't, I'm not at 100, I'm like 75, 80. I know that once those people show up and yep. once I see people in here, we're going to be talking. We're going to have a hilarious conversation about something, make fun of each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a fun day. So knowing that every day is that now is like, damn, all the steps we took. I know. It's just people have to do that. Don't go home and just play games. Like, do, if, unless you're happy yeah. with your life. If you're happy with what's going on, then yeah. you're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for me, like, I knew, like, I knew my, my life shifted when it was Sunday night. Because Sunday night used to always be, you know, when I was a teacher, it was rough. You know, like, I loved, I loved the kids and everything like that. But teaching just being a teacher being a full-time teacher for you know like the school system or whatever there's just so much red tape and so much there's just a lot that goes into it that yeah. really can offer and garner a lot of headaches and stresses and anxiety and my goodness all all, all the bad things right mm-hmm. and so god bless all the teachers out there first of all my mom just mm-hmm. retired actually Ooh, uh awesome. from, from congrats to her congrats yeah to her. so she just she just retired from the high journey. school journey and I have a lot of friends that are in it that are just starting and so I mean I got a lot of love and respect for teachers man so but I tried it for four or five years <laughs> almost five years and so but even still you know because when I were retail when I worked retail for the longest in all my 20s you know mm-hmm. like I didn't know what a weekend was I, I worked Saturdays I worked Sundays so it wasn't until I became a teacher that I had like a you know nine nine to five relatively nine to five mm-hmm. and then Monday to Friday and then you had your weekends your Saturday Sunday <laughs> So I remember when I was a teacher, I was like, man, this is a weird feeling on Sunday night, feeling like, man, the weekend's over. Kind of like what Philby was talking about with the vacation. Yeah. Like every Sunday night, I call them the Sunday night blues. Somewhere around, I don't know what time it is right now, but somewhere around between 3 and 5 o'clock, right? The middle of the day when you're like, dang, in about four hours, five hours maybe, I'm about to go to bed. And I'm going to wake up and I got... I got to go back to what I do on Monday. And I remember, bro, when I quit my job, when I quit, Mm -hmm. and I kind of set it all up because I just didn't quit, but I I set it all up and made sure that I was ready for it. I remember the first Sunday night that I didn't have the blues, and I said to myself, I never, like I'm about to cry right now, like I never want to feel that ever again in my life. Like I would, and this is like single me, right? So I was like, man, I would hate to be like a dad or like a husband and feel miserable and not give my all to my kids on a Sunday or give my all to my wife or whatever, you know, like if we're at the park and we're hanging out and it's a weekend and this is the time that I get to spend with my kids or whatever, but I'm waking up on, you know, by the time Sunday's almost over, I'm going to bed angry, sad, resentful, whatever it is, because I know what I'm waking up to. And so that terrible, bro. Yeah, man, that first Sunday after I quit teaching and I knew that, I mean, it was going to be a scary journey as an entrepreneur and as an artist, but like, yeah, that's a feeling that you can't, it's almost undescribable. It's like euphoric. Like it's almost undescribable. Like I go, I go to sleep like a baby on Sunday night. I wake up on Monday. Mondays don't feel like Monday. Like Monday just, it feels like another day to get that bag. Yeah. It feels. Just, it, let's, let's get that bag. I, I relate everything it. to freedom because it is freedom. That's what it is. And freedom is also scary. Yes. And that's why some people yes. can't handle that. Yeah. A lot, they, of, they, most a lot people, of people. They're scared to quit. They're scared to this because it gives them security mm. and you can't have both. Yeah. There is a balance that you can have. But the same thing with the founding father. Thomas Jefferson would say, those who would give up their freedom for security deserve neither. Wow. And that is the essence of freedom. It's a risky and adventurer's world, and you have to be almost a gambler to be an entrepreneur, to start your own stuff, to quit your job, Mm. because you're willing to risk your life and the security that you have for freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But people aren't able to do that. Now, obviously, if you have a job, yeah. 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 Be built and that and that's the yeah. thing too because uh, it's a it's an easy thing to say yes but then to be like oh shit I'm gonna quit my job and then have to figure shit out yeah right? the, the and, yeah and the thing is like for me I know that 
especially with it. Like this was the case before I even had a family, right? Just mm-hmm. for me, it was like, I, I, I'm going to survive. It doesn't matter yeah. what's happening, what's going on, what I have to do. I can do it. Like he said, I can do anything I need to do. I'm going to figure out a way to, to do whatever. Once you have a family and you have kids and they're so fragile and young and, you know, now you're not only raising them and teaching them, but now you, you're their sole provider. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That starts adding a whole other level to it where it's like, damn. And then for most people, they can't deal with that fear because they're like, what if it fails? And, yeah. that's, and that's what people focus on. It's like, what if I can't do it? What if, I, what if it doesn't work out? Because it, it may not. But that's not what, like our when focus is what's going to happen, yes. how we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. When I think about what can go wrong, my mentality is simply it doesn't matter what goes wrong. Yeah. Like you said earlier, I'm going to get through it. Yes. And, and when it comes to quitting my job to establish whatever, even when it came to barbering, right, when I dropped everything and just started barbering fresh with nobody out here, no clients, wow. it was like a sink or swim. You feel me? Like or. You know, for me, the driving force was I'm not trying to get a job. Yeah. So this shit better work. I need to hustle as much as I can to not have to get a job. I might be tight on money. It might be a struggle, but I'm not getting a job. Like, yes. that was my thing. I don't want to have to be like, shit, I got to go clock in anywhere. Yep. And like yep. I mentioned with him, you know, he has a full-time job and then spent all this time cutting and doing what he had to do to establish the life that he wants for himself. For me, when I left my other jobs... And I, I was almost finishing um, barber school. I, I took a job at the mall at Lids. I got a job managing that place because I was like, okay, I don't know anybody in Ocala. Yeah. I need heavy traffic flow. Nice. And I need people who care about their image. Nice. Right? So I was like, okay, if you're coming in to get a fresh hat, you probably care about how you look, right? And yeah. it's on your head, which is an easy transa- transition to go about the haircuts. So I would uh, hand out my cards in there. Everybody who came in got my card and found out I was wow. a barber. Like everybody. And I, to this day, have a couple clients who I met doing that in Lids before I was even uh, in a barbershop. So at that time, since I didn't have my license, I would work. I would start work at like 10 or 11, and I'd close the shop at like 8 or 9. And before and after work, I would go do mobile haircuts. So I'd, I'd get, hand out those cards and be like, yo, hit me up. I'm doing mobiles before and after work. I'd have all my equipment in the car, wake up in the morning, go cut a couple heads, go to the mall, open up the shop, leave. I'd be charging all my shit in the back. You know what I mean? And then I have it there to tell people, oh, you're a barber? And I just show them, like, I have all my tools. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, we ready to go. Ready. Wow. And then, and then after work, I'd be, they'd be like, oh, can you come today? And I'd be like, yo, 8 o'clock, like, I'll be there. And then shut down the shop, go cut hair, and then be back home until you build enough clientele. Mm-hmm. But people aren't willing, and, and that's not, like, to toot my own horn. It's just to say, like, these are steps you have to take yeah. if you want to establish yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. something. Like, whatever it is you got going on, just like you establishing clientele with art. Yeah. And same thing now for you for the documentary. It's like, Whatever you got going on, you have to be putting in yep. the time to let people know what you're doing. Because yeah. if they don't know, the closed mouths don't get fed. Boom. You know what I'm saying? If you're not out there t- hustling for yourself, who are you? And another aspect, too, is when you have a job, like whatever job, let's think of like one of the worst jobs you had or let's say hardest working job you've ever had, right? Amazon. You're McDonald's. busting your ass, right? You're waking up. <laughs> At a no time. wonder you love McDonald's. <laughs> love it. You're, you're waking up at a time that you don't want to wake up to go to a place that you don't want to be to do a job you don't want to do. And in that job, you know, you're going to probably take out the trash. You're going to have to make sure everything looks neat and nice. You know, you're going to be putting some effort into it if you're a decent person. Yeah. If you don't put all that same energy into your own shit, it's not going to be as good as it can be. Right. Mm-hmm. So like you'll get people who become a barber or establish their own business and then they show up. Do the bare minimum because it's their shit, right? Like they can come in, do a half-ass job and leave and be like, well, I'm done for the day. I did something. Yeah. But you're not going to build a better, stronger business by not putting the same energy you did and effort into somebody else's business as your own. Wow. So it's like you got to spend so much extra time and energy enforcing that and like, all right, if I was waking up early for this person's business, I could do it for my own. You know, there's a good reason that you had to do it for that business. It's because it's necessary. Yes. And actually do way more. Yeah, way more than you yeah, really have because, to. Because, I mean, you already know how technical I am on, like, planning. Yeah. And I literally spend hours every day. Lists for days. Planning. Like, I have Excel spreadsheets and Whoa. Word documents like crazy of executing and planning that I've been doing for over, like, eight years. Really? On this vision that I had. And it's like, it's, and I'm wow. in, right now where I'm in is in an execution stage because I've planned so much and I've fine-tuned mm-hmm. my vision to a level where 
there is no way that it cannot come into fruition. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at now, which is, you know, me obviously right now going on all fruits, losing 65 pounds, trying to write a book on it, trying to create a journal, start documenting. You're trying. I'm going to be making a a documentary, a journal on it. And it's like that has also stimulated and it uh, inspired every other aspect, the podcast, the uh, everything else on it. But what I actually wanted to get was your opinion on, because we've got his perspective on the mural. I wanted to get actually both of your guys at one point. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on what you thought about the finished product of the mural. Oh, dude, it's awesome, man. I, I can't, when he first hit me yeah. up, or when I first hit him up, and I was like, yo, I definitely want, in my mind, like the, the mural I saw in my head was, what, you got to tell him something? Yeah. Hey, you, you're, uh, you out? No, I'll be right back. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, in my mind, when I was thinking about this wall that I wanted painted, originally, it was just galaxy. Like, yeah. like the wall would just be galaxy style. You know what I mean? Nothing else. Yeah. And even at, po- at one point, I was thinking about just getting like a decal, like, a, like one of those wall sticker type things. Yeah. But that shit was crazy expensive for, for what it was. And it was plain. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? No, nah, we just need to do a space mural, which obviously I told him. And then he told me that he was going to come over or he was going to hit me up on a Sunday, which is the day before he was supposed to start painting with the, with the sketches to see if there's anything, you know, any ideas or whatever. And the first picture I saw, which I was going to bed, it was like 1150 mm-hmm. something. And I was like, I hadn't heard from him yet. And I was like, all right, I'm going to bed. And then all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up with like <laughs> vibrations from, the, from different text messages. And my wife's like, who? and I, I was pra- practically asleep at that point. Like yeah. I fall asleep quick. And my wife's like, who is blowing you up? And I was like, <laughs> Oh, it's probably EJ. <laughs> so I got up to go check the phone, and the first one I saw was just a, like a big, like a reference picture for this of, a, of an astronaut. He was like, yeah, I'm thinking giant astronaut. <laughs> and in my head, first of all, it's midnight, I'm half asleep, and in my head, I'm just like, that's not galaxy. <laughs> like, that was the first thing I thought. Which I, I didn't specifically tell him I just wanted galaxy. I said space theme, you know, yeah. with, with galaxy yeah, or whatever. With galaxy. But in my head, it was straight galaxy. Yeah. So then I see this giant white astronaut, and I'm like, <laughs> this is like, and then I was like thinking about the artistic aspect. I was like, he's got a, he's got a vision. <laughs> and, and then, and then I also thought about the fact that I knew we were doing white stations and white chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was like, it, my immediate thought was like, damn, the white might actually be a good little play off of. And real quick, I did not know that. Yeah, he didn't know I did, that. Which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. So then I was like, that actually would be cool. And then he showed me the, the sketch for the background, yeah. which was very stripy, mm-hmm. more stripy than what he yeah. did. And I did not like it. It's just not what I've envisioned. You know what I'm saying? So. Then he came in, and I was like, I, I was like all right, we're going to fucking rock with it. <laughs> it's like, that's what we're doing. So he came in, and just and like, the, like if, as soon as he showed up, he just started spraying on the wall. <laughs> like, he, like, he's like, all right. And I'm just like, that's it? You're just blasting the wall. Like, like he said, he li- attacked that shit, for real. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I see this outline of like an astronaut, and I'm just already like, this is going to be sick. <laughs> like, I already know it's going to be fire. And then obviously with the colors in the background and mm. it, just everything, bro, because I love the boldness of the hard colors, the geometric shapes. Like, it's like every – it's my fucking mural. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's my mural. It's yeah. like we're, we're exactly what I wanted it to be. And then obviously you never did a mural before – or not – you never did a mural in a barbershop. Yep. So it was first like – It was a dope first mm. experience for oh, you. Yeah. And it was like, yo, our shop is his first barbershop. And then there's – I don't know of any barbershop with a mural in it. Not a mural. Like, so, there's some with paintings and stuff, but not a mural. This yeah. is yeah. – I mean, yeah, nobody. So, so I was like, all right, we're doing, we're doing a mural. And then, and then it's so – Elevate. It's just so dope. Like I said, I love, I love looking at it all the time. There, everything else is black. And then once we put the mirrors up, it was even cooler because we can see it off that wall. Yes. yes. So yeah. it was like, that's fire. That's the first thing I noticed when, we put, when you guys put the mirror up. I was like, oof. It, yeah. just, it just always makes a room look bigger. Yes. And what's crazy is like when you guys take the pictures of the haircuts afterward and the, the murals in the background. Yeah. There's just something about it. Yeah, I can't, it, it just looks so it looks so polished. It's a very and, you know, shout out to all the barbers. I mean, a lot of them take great pictures and I love it. But it's, it's your traditional like, oh, yeah, like 
you know, there's there's other you like the background of the haircuts because I remember in Orlando, I would even tell some of the barbershops like, you should set up a station in your shop where you take pictures of your clients, right? Just because it just takes it to that different place. And I've because, seen that, yeah. yeah, and I've seen that been done too. But a lot of people just don't execute on it or they don't care for it. But it's like a lot of people don't think of of um, like fo- how it looks in a photograph, like how it pictures out, right? And I'm like, guys, like, just please take it from me as an artist. Like, think about how it pictures out because it only will elevate it to the next level. So when I started seeing you post the – the, because I didn't know how you were going to do it. I mean, I, I just – I didn't know, you yeah. know? So, like, when I started seeing the mural in the background of your cuts, I'm like, this – this <laughs> is different in the best of ways, bro. Yeah. Like, nobody yeah. – again – nobody's doing it like y'all thank you man no, and I so appreciate that's it. why i'm like i'm just excited to be yeah. in in like just the midst of what's happening no I, same I, here bro and you you actually having done it like that's how i feel i feel like you're always in here yeah you know what i'm saying me because too the and then painting. i see the pictures but i'm like i'm there yeah, yeah and then and then i take and that was the idea behind uh so for me i think a lot of barbers which we're gonna it's gonna be part of our courses and our workshops too yeah but that the fact that they don't think of how it pictures out is yeah. a huge deal. It's crazy. And people we've talked about this plenty of times because they don't they're showing the haircut, which is fine. Like yes. it's a cool haircut. But when you look at a picture, everything about that picture says something to you. Yes. And you don't fully like it's not a, a wholly intellectual thing. It's just a visual reaction yep. reactive thing. And so much so that corporations he, he, he'd like the example, McDonald's, all these different places. When they do commercials, they put a hell of a lot of time and energy thinking about, let's say if it's just a shot of a burger, just a photo of a burger. burger. They put so much into how it's laid out, the background of the picture, the positioning of it, the angle on the background, the lighting. Yes. And that, there's a reason that looks so delicious when you take that picture. Because yeah. Yeah. if they just took the, the burger – and just took a regular picture of it on a table, it wouldn't look nearly as appetizing. No. And it's the exact same thing with haircuts, with anything, right? But in our world, we're doing haircuts. So I, 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 I told this to another barber recently. I was like, dude, you do great haircuts, but your pictures are terrible. The picture, it's... <laughs> the pi- I mean, it's the truth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not that the, the picture of the cut is bad. It's everything about the picture. Yeah. It's the angle of the haircut. It, it's, like, it's like, okay, perfect example is... When selfies first started being a thing, you automatically knew who was over 30 taking a selfie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the selfie would be like this. Even now. Even, even yeah. now, they'll yeah. still do it. Or now it's kind of vice versa. Well, maybe not vice versa, but you'll know the older women. Yeah, because they're the taking MySpace. Like they're this. taking a MySpace angle. Yeah. Yeah, so. Here. My mom does that all the time. Shout out, mom. <laughs> she'll be like, she takes selfies, she'll be like this. I'm like, Ma, you gotta stop doing that. You gotta. <laughs> but, but, uh, but that, so it's very obvious when you take those pictures. If you're a barber, like a lot of barbers, they'll cut the hair, and then from their angle, they'll just take a shot of the haircut. Yeah. Like randomly, and you just see the floor. I know. And you see people waiting behind yeah, yeah. it. Yes. And it's like, that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it could be cool if you consider how it frames in the picture. Yes. Yeah. But like for me, that was a huge reason too for the mural and, and it being on that wall. Because I don't, the idea of having a, a photo station is dope and I've seen that play out. Yeah. I just personally am too lazy for that. I would rather just be doing it while they're in the Absolutely. chair. Absolutely. Less steps, less stuff. You know what I mean? So for me, it's about getting the right angle with the right lighting so that mm-hmm. when I take the picture of the haircut with a cool angle, because the angle, if you just take a regular like straight on shot, it's not as appetizing. You know yeah. what I mean? But if you get that nice angle, turn their head the right way, and then you look at the way that lighting is on the back of the, the in this case, the mural, it's like, damn, that looks sick, right? Because it's like, you're not really paying attention to the mural, but you know it's there and it looks cool because you've got colors and stuff like that. And then you also are seeing this, nice lit up angle of the haircut and if you can move it around it's a little dynamic yep and so it's just like so many barbers don't think about that and the fact that we have that is perfect because it's like i don't have to take a picture with you seeing our station in the back or this it's like check out this art in front of this art yeah you feel me like it's perfect and then the, the color looks sick bro i don't know we yeah i can't stop talking about it i love it and people people love it everybody who comes in they're like can i take a picture i'm like hell yeah, bro. yeah. tag it up so, oh, yeah. not literally, but yeah. tag, tag, tag the picture. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, bro, it's fun. I love it. I dude. actually wanted, I was curious, what, what actually got you into mural work? Like, what was your first mural? Um, I mean, 
if you want to be super technical, my first mural was when I was a kid. Uh, my mom allowed me to draw all over my walls and, and my my room. So like mm-hmm. in high school, it really started in like middle school, kind of bled into high school. But I would literally just take my Sharpie and my mom would just be cool with me just going to town. I draw my, my walls. I draw my door, my desk. I draw on the like the blades of the fan. I would take the fan blades off, draw on that, put it back on. I would take the kind of like the, the blades, if you will, of the blinds. I would take each one off individually. I draw on it, put it right back on. So that way my blinds were like a piece of art. That's so like as I think about it, and I thought about this uh, not too long ago, probably about maybe last year, I was like, dang, man, like I've been drawing on like on walls and on things for a long time, like subconsciously, just not thinking about it. And for me, you know, it was just kind of I, a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago, I had a couple of opportunities to paint like a, like a parking lot, uh, like a parking space. And um, I did something for like a friend that owned uh, like a comic book store. So I did some stuff like that, but it was never like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to charge somebody to do it. I'm going to turn this into a business. It was always on my canvas because I was always so confident with canvas work. But when it came to wall work i just never really was confident enough until i was approached by lake wells and i did the intersection the lines so i appreciate that that was the first time that somebody approached me and was like hey like how what's up like how much do you charge and i remember being like how much do, does what charge you know like i had never been asked fifty thousand. <laughs> i had never been asked how much something costs in regards to a mural canvas all day long. I've been doing that for a long time, but I just never was confident enough in wall work to be like, yeah, well, it costs as much. And I just remember, you know, we, we, we did it and the city of Lake Wells paid me to paint that intersection until this day is the biggest mural I've ever done. But like after that day, it was just my confirmation of like, yeah, EJ, you can get paid for doing street work, you know, floor work, wall work, and large scale. Hmm. And now I've fallen in love with it so much that really, in regards to art, I personally would love to just pivot to this just going forward murals. for a while. You know, like just straight murals. There's something about it. It's very beautiful. Like the process of doing it, getting it on the wall, and then being able to just kind of step back, take a deep breath, yeah. and be like, wow, like I did that. And, you know, I can just take some time off, you know, because mural work is a lot different than canvas work in regards to pay and mm-hmm. what people are willing to pay for it and, and whatnot. So the intervals of time in between project to project are a little longer. So it allows me to be able to kind of live my life with more freedom and to kind of take a deep breath for, for, for time's sake to be able to rejuvenate my creative juices, if you will. Mm-hmm. So like the future definitely are murals and I'm excited for that. So we'll see, man. We'll and see. shock style. Yeah, shock style. The shock style is sick. Bro. That's Thanks, amazing. Man. And I, I was glad, too, that uh, we were able to get him to do the documentary because he's been talking about doing films for so long. And the opportunity and the time to do it wasn't there. And I was like, yo, what better way to start this off yep. than to do a documentary of us doing a barbershop? Yeah. Wow. And it's obviously somebody that I'm close with. Yes. And it's going to be a comfortable environment. I already know. And that with that level of experience, that comfortability that came with coming and doing it, it's like now I feel comfortable doing it for somebody who's random. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, you have that experience of yeah. like, oh, okay, I, I've, I've experienced doing this before. I know this. Yeah. I know what not to do. For exactly. You. Yeah. Exactly. And then, you know, doing all these other things while yeah. filming and stuff. So Because I remember him telling me when I first told him I was going to be there that he was like, I, he he kind of didn't want us to be in the yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that, that's not usually my flow. But it all worked out. I mean, usually I like to be by myself, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. when I'm painting. But it it actually ended up being a, an amazing experience because, like, the bond, a bond was built. You know what I'm saying? You were here there documenting. Phil B. Gonzo be in there, like, you know, just building things. They were building the, the drawers and, you know, bringing in the couches and, you know, just doing – they were just building the – the shop while I was painting the wall. So it really made me feel like I was a part of something that was bigger than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times with the mural work, it's like, I'm just, I'm working on a mural. Yeah. It's me and the mural, you know what I'm saying? But like, there's something about knowing that while I'm doing this, there's other things that play in this yeah. whole journey as well. It's like an that, orchestra. Yeah. That, yes. that, that, yeah. that feeling was the exact feeling I got from 
doing the documentary. Like, yeah. you're part of something more than just being a filmmaker. You're experiencing life as you record it. Yeah. And you're enjoying the what's the reality right there in front of you and what's happening and what's being created and enjoying that moment and the bonds that you make and the friendships yeah. and stuff. And I enjoy socializing and talking to people and stuff like that too. Yeah. I, I so. love watching documentaries, period, like a good documentary. There are plenty of boring ones. But I yeah. love watching a good documentary and I always have the feeling or the thought at a certain point in time if it's good enough where I'm just like, damn, how cool would – would it have been to be there? Yeah. Like to be in that room where they're I at, know. where this is going down and feel it. Yeah. And that's why I love that we decided to do it too, all of us, because that's how it's going to feel when you're watching it. You I know, know what I mean? Like, oh, damn, what if I was in the room? And it's like, I'm going to remember everything about being in the room at that time. So yeah. it's going to be special. Man. It's going to be fun. Then we're all going to be GQ'd up. For oh, the, yeah. For no, the I, hopefully we all, we all dress up, man. It's, it's a movie for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going in the suit, so I don't know about y'all. I'm going in the I'm, suit. I'm going to have to. Yeah. I'll run a tux. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm getting a director's hat. So. Bro, it's going to be good. What? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a nice night. It's going to be in, uh, is, it, uh, is it for sure going to be in the Marion Oaks? You downtown Oaks? Downtown, Marion Theater. Marion, Marion Theater. Theater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to wait till Gonzo came back, yeah. but uh, I, I don't know when could, he's coming. Yeah, back. exactly. Yeah, yeah. But Gonzo had to dip for something. He was just like, "I gotta go." Up I gotta go. Yeah, he, what? He got he a had phone to pick call. Up a little equipment. I forgot he said that around three o'clock. What equipment? So I don't know. Oh, just other random but, shit. Yeah, yeah. But it was. Uh, I think it was three o'clock. Like, oh shit! Yeah, a great podcast. Yeah, man. Sure. Thank um, you, bro. Absolutely. And they can find you on. I appreciate you coming on, man. Oh yeah. Tell everybody where you know you can find you on Instagram, Facebook. So everything is official Ness, so official like a referee, and as in Nancy, E-H, S as in super, all together on my TikTok, my Instagram, and I'm back on Twitter now because I'm working on NFTs, hey. so we'll say that for another episode. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I'm on all accounts, man, so official Ness. Sweet. Awesome. And then Gano Gonzo's, is, uh, his Instagram is at Gonzo1990X. 199x so. nice awesome and elevate barbering follow yeah. the new instagram for elevate barbering yeah. yep. keep stay tuned for you know their academy they're going to be building up pretty soon facebook here. and instagram Ooh. elevate barbering facebook and instagram and then a uh, website I'm working on the website i was right going to say website website awesome. going to be up in Lily. what's the website elevate, elevate barbering barbering.com yeah. awesome stay tuned but i All appreciate right. y'all good good episode yeah man oh yeah that's a wrap that's a wrap